I'm, I'm bringing that back today. <laughs> I'm bringing this I back. I did uh, Tom Bell's uh, show mm-hmm. with Sarah Mello at that, that studio. Bro, it was legit, man. Mm. It was legit a good time. Mm. Wait a second. Let me switch. Counts. Dang. Um, all right, there we go. Xavier Jones, yeah, what up, my boy? Man, when I tell you I did 90 the whole way home. Yeah. Coming from Sun Valley to make it here on time and made it. You made it early. I didn't get a chance to eat though. Same. So I'm be uh doing a little dippage going on. Hey, you do your thing, brother. It's your show. Don't you ever forget it. You understand me? <laughs> that smooth voice that you got going right there. Got a mic now. I ain't got to yell no more. Where is your shirt, Clayton? Oh, uh, brother, I'm sexy, man. I thought we talked about this before. If that wasn't already known, I think it needs to be known now. <laughs> <laughs> I have one sexy son of a gun. So I think uh, that's out of the question for me to just have some shirt on the guns. But other than that, you know. Man, I did not know if I was going to make it. I did 30 minute drive. Mm hmm. And 23. Mm. 90 the whole time. You know, it'd be like that. <laughs> Nobody let Tristan forget about that picture that he has up right now. I want I want explanations for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want an explanation for that. Ryan hey, bro, with the braids though. What up, bro? How you doing, man? Um, oh, Ron got the promoter braids, guess. I'm Get the fuck out of That's what I am. <laughs> Get out of here. I'm a Dominican rapper. That is crazy. I've never seen Ron with long hair. That's wild. I never had long hair. I was like, let me try it. So, wow. <laughs> Can't go Tristan. nowhere. What's up, good brother? What up, Chris? How you doing, bro? Oh, uh, your sound ain't on. Go on, turn your sound on. Fresh we'll place. Wait. We'll wait. Brother Davis, what's up, man? What up, Ron? Is that an old school Patriots jersey? Who's that? Uh no, Shane Falco from the replacements. Hmm. Okay. The movie? Yeah. <laughs> That's so random. Right. Is that a online ad jersey? <laughs> no, it's a. I got I got the Forrest Gump Alabama jersey too, man. I just yeah. like movie character jerseys, nigga. It was like I, I wanted the Bobby Boucher, but they ain't have it. That sold out fast. Oh, <laughs> That's how I feel about that. the Helmet College one. The Helmet College uh, jersey. So dope. Okay. What you pulling out, Trish? Oh, this is uh Mr. 50 Cents, Branson Cognac. Oh, okay then. Okay. Smooth? Ooh. Is it smooth? It's smooth. With oh, a V. Nice. <laughs> he came in with a smooth voice. It's smooth. So I hear the bubble bath. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, I'm trying to get these endorsements, nigga, okay? <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> if don't nobody get it, your boy gets it. Isn't that right? Tell him more, dude. <laughs> 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 oh lock well listen man um let's go ahead and get it coming uh going um i think neil is still supposed to be coming i sent him the link as well so um i'll just text him uh-huh 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 yeah there we go mm. all right well I send them a text, so we're going to go ahead and get it started, man. Got my homies in the house. Welcome back to another episode of Zooming with the homies. Um, we have one first-timer right now, and, and in a minute, another first-timer will be pulling up, hopefully. Uh, but if not, man, you know we're going we're gonna to have a good time tonight. Um, this is the Men Secure edition. These are all the men that have been on Insecure. Um, very excited about this episode, man. Uh, very excited about who's pulling up. Um, and you know, we'll see, we'll, we'll see what else is going on. But uh, right now, we're just gonna kick it off. I'm gonna start with the introductions first and foremost. Uh, let's start with most recent episodes. Uh, we have uh, Ryan Davis. Hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> I don't think no introduction needs to be made for Ryan Davis. Uh, y'all remember his character, very funny guy. Um, Super Mo. excited to have him on him and uh, a good friend, Ryan Davis. What's up, brother? Man, what's up to here, man? I appreciate you thinking of me whenever you put this together, man. <laughs> Didn't even have to say nothing to you or nothing, man. It was, Hilarious. you know, that's how I know 
that's how I know people really be watching to see what you know what I mean you got going on man and appreciate you and that's just like you appreciate me I appreciate you my guy so what Ryan is doing right now is being facetious guys because <laughs> he wasn't originally on the show okay <laughs> Neil hit me up, was like, yo, Ryan talking about you. He feels the type of way not, not being on the show. And I was like, I didn't want to bother the brother because I know Ryan still be out here in these streets, okay? Ryan still be on these stages. He on the tour right now. I, I, I didn't want to. Last time, last time Ryan was on the show, he had just finished the show with Corey Holcomb in Atlanta. He was pulling up <laughs> at the Waffle House, and he got in the middle of the drive-by. So I was like, I don't even know if it's cool to call him. Hey, bro, as crazy as that sound, that's about as accurate as can be. Like, I was <laughs> on here with him, and there was police lights everywhere. And niggas is like, you all right? I'm like, no. Nigga, there's never a time. <laughs> he played it so cool. He played it so cool in the car. He was just like, yeah, man. Because he, he's on the phone. He's like, yeah, man, just had the show. Corey, it was a good show. Police lights are going crazy. And I was like, uh... You need help? He's like, nah, we good. We just gonna uh, pull over right here. <laughs> <laughs> you try to act calm so niggas don't, you know what I mean? So so niggas to get calm with you. For some reason, in my mind, I was like, they can't see the lights. They can't see the blue lights. <laughs> right. back and forth nah. across my face. Hey, to here, you know he in the comedy condo right now. <laughs> <laughs> the condo that's across from the comedy club? Like, he in the comedy yeah. condo right now. <laughs> Y'all ever get to the comedy condo and there's a nigga still in there? Right. Oh. The local dude. I, I, I've been in there and the nigga left all his stuff. I'm talking about open condom wrappers, old condoms, drawers. I was like, who's cleaning? Who's Nobody. cleaning down here? <laughs> you, nigga. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, next up, we have uh, my brother in the house, man. Uh, this this how you know he's a solid brother, man. I had to go pick up a hood for the old school. This hood was two hours away um without traffic and <laughs> i told him i was like hey man listen i have to go rent a truck i'll do it myself he's like no nah, man i already said i'll do it and uh he came and picked me up and we we went and did it and i got this hood this hood was bigger than the bed of his truck and we had to go to auto zone and get some tie downs and i didn't know how to do it we found some random guy walking in and i was like hey man can you show me how to do this and <laughs> he was like um <laughs> i'll just pay the nigga like <laughs> So this is my brother. He's also on Insecure, ladies and gentlemen. We got Mr. Clayton Thomas in the house. What's up, brother? Hey. You know, I knew he was just waiting. That's why his screen was off. I knew Hilarious. he was just waiting. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking about a whole bunch of other stuff, and I wanted to make sure my intro got done. Here's the thing, brother. Let's talk about it. Um, number one, uh, let's back all the way up. So Ryan, I can't wait for the other dude to get in. What is his name? Neil. Um, Neil. You said who? Neil. Neil, Neil yeah. Neil, man. First and foremost, this Neil brother, I'm going to save that until he gets here, but I'm going to hold tight on that. But know that I want to address the Ryan Davis saga going on with Neil and Ryan Davis later. Number two, when you hit me up to go get that hood, which I don't understand is I have a truck. Okay. When you got a truck, people always asking you to help move shit. You understand me? And that's not about my life. You understand that truck is for looks and not for anything else. You understand? Number two. When you hit me up and you was like, yeah, let's go another day. I'm like, brother, you don't know how long I've been cooped up in this goddamn house. Okay. <laughs> I will go anywhere. If you told me that hood was in Ohio, goddamn it, that's what the fuck we were going. You understand <laughs> me? So I didn't care about no reschedule or shit. Number three, I was on Insecure for about two and a half minutes. So the fact that you reached out to me at all to be on this, I was like, uh, okay. Residual still going. So I ain't tripping. Right. <laughs> Right. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Max. That part right there. All right, well, uh, hilarious though, Tasha cousin. You, no. <laughs> you know what's even crazier? I was like, yo, I wonder if I come back. And then she got written off the show. I'm like, they ain't about to bring the cousin back <laughs> if, the, if the character ain't there. Listen, that's exactly how I felt about this season. I was like, oh, she ain't talking to Lawrence no more. I'm right, mm. get rid of these clothes. I ain't got to look like this no more. I ain't never come back on the show. Thank you. Um, mm. Imagine how hurt I was with the uh, the season finale had another barbershop scene and I went did it. I was like, did I get fired from the barbershop, nigga? Nobody. I was like, y'all didn't even care who was in the okay. Um, right. moving on to my other brother, man. Um, very funny comedian, writer, producer, um, Emmy winner, um, braid wearer, husband, uh, <laughs> Club the man of the South, man of the cloth. Uh, also, another brother that was on Insecure. Uh, Y'all give it up for Marion's little brother. We got Ryan here. <laughs> 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 
He's the greatest <laughs> dancer. Let me tell you something. Let me just add to Ryan can you do G's that after introduction. my intro, and then we can let me just get my intro out the way. No, yeah. man, you need okay, all cool, of right. the glory, brother. Okay, Ladies cool. and gentlemen, ahead. from South Carolina by way of Atlanta, one of the <laughs> greatest dancers <laughs> in the world who happens to be a phenomenal comedian. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan G. I appreciate it, bro. I'm going to dance on the back of your pickup truck one day. We're going to make that happen. <laughs> That's a fact. Hey, since we all saying our part two, bro, you could have told me I wasn't going to make it. Uh, me and Kelly wasn't going to make it. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought me and Kelly was going to make it. When she did that marathon and I wasn't there, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to get another episode. That's it. <laughs> Here's the thing. That's it. You would think somebody that's getting fingered under the table. And hmm. <laughs> we need to log off. You let me you do would that. Think, you, you would think that y'all going to make it. You, gonna, you would think that that would happen. But what was that sound? Work. What was? <laughs> you know what the sound is. <laughs> yeah. That, see, you that, my that, watch sound, Hold on, that sound my watch means to hear know what he be doing. That's the sound you make when you cup up. That's right. Hey. When you cup up. <laughs> like, excuse me, I need to get my watch. Um, my out of, watch is, out uh... of pocket, man. Um, <laughs> next up, man, this is a new friend. Um, invited him to Word in His Heart and really just hit it off with the brother, man. He's an L.A. native. Um, you guys may remember him as Thug Yoda on the hey. show. Uh, the blood that would never say any words that started with C's. He was teaching his daughter his her ABBs. I loved it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. Tristan J. Winger on the show. What up, T? You see what, what up, you started? What up? You, you see how he turned his, That's his hilarious. camera? That's <laughs> Yeah, I did. he did a whole intro. Oh, I, was like, hilarious. I was like, Clayton got a nice-ass intro, and he just popped up. I was like, I'm going to go away for a little bit. I'm going to disappear and make it look like I got some business to handle. Pull up Let me tell you. Yet. Let me tell you something right now, brother. First of all, you're a phenomenal actor. On Agreed. top of that, Close I have to tell you that I have a personal beef with you. Um, it's crazy <laughs> because uh, once I realize- I think I know I'm, what you're going to say. It's crazy. I think I know what you're going to say. Ladies and gentlemen, this young brother is on a phenomenal show called Bigger on BET. And I want to tell this whole story as we get past the intros, but it's hilarious. And this brother beat me out for the role on Bigger, deservedly so, because you are phenomenal. <laughs> But uh, once y'all hear this story, I think y'all all gonna agree <laughs> that this brother is crafty. You understand me, goddamn? Oh, Go ahead, Tahir. I'm sorry. Man, <laughs> He's it. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Go ahead, Tahir. Tristan is probably the, the newest person to my my circle, man. But when I tell you, man, this brother is so his energy is so infectious and so cool, man. When he came on working his hard, I, I I like I literally be DM sliding people to get on the show. Like I ain't know <laughs> Tristan before. I know uh, we were familiar with each other's work. I seen like a couple videos and stuff like that. And I was like, yo, this brother's, he's funny, dog. And so when I slid in, I was like, yo, man, I would love to have you on my show, boom, boom, boom. He was like, I love to, man. I was like, I don't know the proper protocol. Pro 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 protocol. <laughs> that wouldn't have been it. That was, that was a chicken. That was a chicken. That was a chicken. I, I don't know the proper the protocol. protocol. The don't do that, Ron. Don't do that. We brothers. <laughs> Come on, man. I had to bring that up at the light skin convention that you did that. All right. Protocol. <laughs> I knew it was a convention. <laughs> And he ain't paid the dudes that. Ron ain't paid his dudes at the convention either. I, I didn't. I'm two years behind on mine. <laughs> well, anyway, man, um, he when he hit me with the whole, he's like, um, yeah, man, just loot my manager in the email and all that. I was like, oh, shit, this is going to go south real quick. Yeah. Yeah. But it was super cool. His manager just wanted the paperwork for the whole COVID thing. Super mm. cool. And when I brought it up on the show, he was like, man, I felt like a dick after I said it. I was like, no, <laughs> you work for that manager, though. Uh -huh. We all remember before we had a manager. We all remember before we had an agent. But to have somebody working on your behalf for you, mm -hmm. bro, it's a good feeling. So, nah, you did right, brother. I appreciate you doing it. And I appreciate you pulling up to the show. And I appreciate you pulling up tonight. Thank you. I'm here. Hey. Mm -hmm. So, oh, wait, uh, Neil was just right here. I don't know where, <laughs> where he went. No, well, let's wait on him so I get to this story. Because I seen him. He probably wanted to go get something light skin. Now, let me tell you this right now, man. Do some push-ups real quick. He definitely hit a push-up. <laughs> and some burpees hey, for the one time. <laughs> hey, Neil is probably the most reclusive person on this, this Zoom right now. But this mm -hmm. motherfucker is built and prepared for war, okay? Mm -hmm. And so shit breaks out. I'm going to Neil's house. He has a fucking arsenal. Mm. Um, it's an underground bunker. Uh, he's, he's he does all his own stunts. Um, yeah, I'm going to Neil's house. I'm going. I'm going to goddamn Neil's house. And whenever he pulls up, I'm gonna give him this introduction as well. Um, nice. <laughs> Ryan Davis, what you over there doing? Bringing more people in. Okay. 
Well, let me oh, you the create a video right now. <laughs> okay, there we you go. Know what I'm All I'm trying to do is add, add. Listen, we in the intros. My intros is gone. I'm in promotion mode, man. I want more <laughs> people to see the dope shit to hear puts together, and to hear wants to <laughs> call me out. In the comedy <laughs> condo. Mm. Here's, here's the thing, Ryan. <laughs> I'll accept that because you are doing the Lord's work. Uh, Thank you. I want to give a big shout out and welcome to the show. We have Mr. Neil Brown Jr. What's up, sir? Hey. Your uh, mic is your mic. His mic's not on. Yeah, nope. his mic is muted. Your mic is muted, Neil. Also, oh, you got sunglasses. Got to turn it on. He ain't even turned himself on. He's he going his, off. His dude. mic on. He's just doing that. He's just doing. He's just. Yeah, doing he's that. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they don't steal it from my headphones, man. My wife, she grabs it, and says she's doing it. She can't find it. We can't um, find it. Let, well, let me give you your intro, Neil. Uh, Neil was one of the first people that I really bonded with on set. And um, the first season, I don't know, Neil, um, Straight Outta Compton had to come out yet on the first season, right? Uh, the first, it had. Just, I feel like it just came out. It wasn't okay, even, okay. Like, so I was familiar with Neil, I think, from Straight Outta Compton. And you know, mm. you know, like this, this was one of my first major productions. So I don't know how people are gonna act. You hear all the stories about stars and how they're all assholes on set. You don't really want to meet. Don't meet your yeah, you that's know, me. idols yeah, and stuff me. like that. Um, Neil is not that at all. Okay, he might act like it. He's not your not idol that. at all. Is that what you're saying? Huh? He's not that at all. He's he not my idol at all. <laughs> I didn't say. No, I'm <laughs> is that what you're saying. It's not, not that at all. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I'm not a fan. He's not my idol, but listen. I'm, a, I'm terrible. I'm the worst. Neil, Neil is not that at all. He is not who Chad is at all. He is a, a very respected, <laughs> god fearing man. Um, he does have a lot of guns. I will say that. He does have a lot of guns, but he was so welcoming, and I really gave me any information I, I needed, and <laughs> was, was willing to like be somewhat of a big brother in this whole industry, which is rare to find somebody. Cause a lot of times comedy and acting, it's a, it's a solo sport for, for those people. And they feel like, not everybody, but a lot of people feel like they don't want to get cool with you cause they don't want to go against you for a role or some shit like that, Clayton and Trishan. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> Neil wasn't that at all, man. Very inviting, gave me his number. I think like first and second day, man. It was super cool the whole time. Always been in contact, always been a supporter of the brand and always been working, man. This was one of the most workingest men I've ever met in my life. So mm -hmm. everybody, I want to welcome Neil Brown Jr. to the show. What's going nice. on, sir? What's up, you <laughs> now, <laughs> let me do it, man. It's time to hear. Okay, so Clayton has a story yeah. about Tristan. Well, and... no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the story in a minute. First, let me get the smoke out of the way with Ryan Davis and uh and Neil. Now, wait, make sure. Yeah, that's Neil. All right, cool. So I'll post the flyer. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Actually, wait. Let me say this. Okay. This is another episode of Zooming with the Homies. Um, everybody on here is a comedian or actor, but most of us. Everything is on pause and we are not be able, being able to work right now. So this show is not behind the paywall because I want you guys to get it raw and unfiltered and I don't want any rules established against it. But I will say this, if you guys can bless my guests tonight with a little something, they would greatly appreciate it. I would appreciate you looking out for them, taking time out of the schedule and coming up here so we can share some stories, we can share some laughs and we can meet and, and greet with you guys. So mm -hmm. at this time, I'm gonna ask all my, um, my guests to change your name to your cash app. And uh, oh. if you need help with that, let me know. I can change it for you. Um, yeah, yeah mine like Neil, you probably don't need started. it, but you know, you 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 are more than welcome to do it. And if you yeah. don't have a cash app, feel free to use mine <laughs> as the name. <laughs> <Yeah. of yours. laughs> I'm gonna get it to you, fam. I'm gonna well, get you. Neil. Do you want uh, you want your cash app up? You want me to change it? No, I don't, I don't even have. I don't even have. Them. Use my Ooh. cash app. It's Neil's cash Ooh. app. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, that baby hair and I'll know, make like, sure, and I'll be able to tell the difference when you send it. Send the message said this is for Neil. I'll make sure he gets it. He got baby hair. No, I'm gonna have tithers rights. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm good, but thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, you, you know what? Okay, Brian, Brian is mine. Give Ryan, give Ryan some. Give, give, give him my stuff. Hey, I was <laughs> waiting on the nigga to co-sign. I was like, damn, nigga, are we <laughs> friends or not? <laughs> <laughs> but no, okay, that's okay. with your story <laughs> about Ryan and Neil. What happened? Okay, so but first of all, thank you for asking me, Terry. I appreciate you uh, tossing it to me. Now, number one, man, you know, to hear more says, hey, brother, I want you to post this flyer. I'm doing Zooming with the homies. I say, to hear, 
it would be nothing but an honor to post this flyer. You understand me? I post the flyer. I tag all the brothers in the flyer. First of all, which I rarely do. I don't just be tagging everybody because I feel like, you know right. what? They got the same flyer I got. Let them do their thing. But today, I'm in a good goddamn mood. Let me let me fly everybody. So the first comment I see is from my good friend, Ryan Davis. He says, yo, I was on the show too. Y'all don't forget about me. I say, well, damn. Well, first and foremost, that does seem like an oversight on Tahir's part. I don't book the show, brother. <laughs> you, you definitely should hit Tahir, right? So in the middle of me reading that, I see a response from brother Neil, right? Brother Neil says, shameful. I say, this this is some audacity right here, okay, oh, yeah. brother? This oh, brother yeah. didn't even say, oh man, thanks for tagging me. Oh, hey, can't wait to do the show with you. He went straight to defending Ryan Davis. So I said, hey man, first of all, uh, I got smoke for you tonight. You understand me, Neil? And now seeing Neil inside the chat, he's a lot bigger than I realized. So I feel like I'm just gonna <laughs> roast him with the most compliment of compliments that I could ever roast. You look like all your girlfriends are still very good friends with you. Right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Invited him to my wedding. Yes, I did. <laughs> look like you donate your time at children's hospitals and sign autographs. That's what you look like. Oh, good Christian ass. That's what you look like. You look like. Amen. Amen. Like I got a good relationship with the Lord. Now, the other thing to hear more about Tristan. Now, this is some real trip. Man, let me tell you something. What I respect about this brother, Tristan. About a year and a half ago, we go to the uh, to the screen test for the show called Bigger, right? Produced by Will Packer, BT. This is crazy. Oh, and, y'all made it to the screen test. Mm. Oh, screen test. Oh, you didn't. <laughs> he got beef as well. It's what we hilarious. Find out. I didn't even know about it. So we at the screen right. test, right? right. <laughs> they beefing about some shit. We didn't, didn't even hit our table. <laughs> didn't even know about it. <laughs> We all are like, wait, 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 they started filming? Thing. They started filming already? Look at this, right. I you watched the whole season, corona? like, I don't remember. Season one, been done. They about to release season two. So check. Nope. So we at the screen test, right? As myself, it's like, you know, like I feel like 40 or 50 other people and uh, all actors going out for similar roles. So we're all told to be down, like, downstairs, right? I see brother Tristan. When we get called upstairs, he's in the room with the other actors who look like they might move on. You understand me? Like we all sitting. I'm, if the role, what's the it character? Look like they move on. What does it look like? Tristan, what's the character's name that you play? My name, my name is Vince. Okay, so Vince. So Vince is the character that we're all reading for, right? So all the Vinces are sitting together. Okay, this particular Vince, aka Tristan, is sitting with all the other characters. You understand me? So we like, man, what's up with that guy? Why is he not sitting with the Vinces? You know? So uh, we go in there and read. <laughs> We go in there and read after we get done reading. I know that I didn't get it immediately. I'm like, okay, <laughs> they got what they looked for. They have wait, found. Wait, how did you know? How did you know? You <laughs> this is how I knew. Spirit. You ever go into an audition and you be like, hey, everybody, and everybody's like this? Hey, what's <laughs> right, right. this is the look of we've already picked Tristan. We're talking to his agent right now. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Clay, they call his they call his agent while you was auditioning. Uh, yeah, no, he no, he's anyway. Go ahead, Clayton. All right, yeah, yeah, we want him Tuesday. Yeah, brother. When I saw that, I'm gonna tell you what it taught me, Tristan. I said, you know what? From now on, guess who the fuck I'm not sitting with the other Vincents. I'm going to sit with the other characters. Brother, the chemistry, read, bro. You got to get that chemistry. That is a fact. <laughs> That's what they sit with the Vincents. That is so hilarious, bro. I was sitting with the Vences. He over here sitting with the other characters. Like, he's a renegade. I'm over here doing what I'm told. I ain't doing that sitting shit. Sitting with the alternate Vincents. <laughs> yeah, <all> right. <laughs> Ron, you, uh, God bless you got to really be you and your character, man. Like, what was that experience like um, for you to do a show like Insecure and they really wanted you to bring you to the set? It was dope, man. It was For me, it was like to see a show that you already love and be on it to me it felt like being a part of history and in my head the only thing i was scared of i'm like man i'm about to have my butt cheeks out i know it every episode a black man got his butt cheeks out Thank you. i'm brand new married i'm newly married i'm like my cheeks is gonna be out i know it's gonna happen uh and i didn't find out until we did the uh the uh until we did that uh episode but i think like the day of the day before i didn't find out until like the day of. i was like okay cool and i was like if I do that, I know my cheeks are gonna be out the next day. The next episode I do, the cheeks is gonna be out. I like, I know it's gonna happen. But um, <laughs> it was super dope, man. And it's so funny because I improv in one of my lines, which is sometimes a no-no. Because I know uh, most writers are very uh, they're sticklers about their writing. But I did. Mm. I, I said, uh, I was like, 
when I first saw you, I knew it was a, a, a fajita. And I said, that's a wrap. And I said that and they kept it. <laughs> so as a comedian, you know how it is. When we get permission to be ourselves, because I feel like Friday would not have been, fr the first Friday would not have been Friday if Chris Tucker couldn't be himself. And when yeah. they do that, bro, like it was done. It was okay. done. So it was, it was awesome, man. And to be on set and see all those black hair and makeup people and producers, for yeah. me was life changing. Because I did a show uh, on Hulu. Uh, I forgot the name of it. Um, nah, it works so much. It's crazy. Working, it's working so much. Yeah. It's right. It was that a flex? It wasn't even a word. I got, I got, I got braids so now. I was going, shut, I got shut braids. I? Shut up. <laughs> and I was the only black person on set. And so I'm in hair and makeup. And the, late, the white lady took a brush and she brushed my mohawk forward. Mm. And I was like, what you doing? And she was like, I know what I'm doing. And I was like, well, you, you got, she was doing moose. She put moose in her hand and started doing like this. I'm like, no, ma'am, you can't put this on. And I, I brought my clippers on, pur on purpose. I knew it wasn't gonna be no black people in hair and makeup. And I cut my hair in the truck. I lined myself up. I'm like, no, nah, we not doing this. And she got, <laughs> mad at me. she got mad at me. She was like, I've been doing this for over 20 years. You're gonna tell me, I don't know how to do your hair. I'm like, well, you about to put moose on my hair and you brush my mohawk forward. This is not gonna happen. Mm. Mm. So to see I all those black it. people on a TV show, for me, bro, like, it's a, it's a black man's dream to be on a show that dope. Mm. Yeah. Neil, I feel like your character couldn't be further from who you really are as a person. Yeah. And knowing you personally, that's why I feel comfortable saying that. Like, how was it for you to play that guy? Because Neil, your character, Chad was kind of a, he was kind of an asshole. He was kind of misogynistic. He was like, well, I got money. I'll buy a purse. Just shut the hell up. Uh, <laughs> I never said kind of misogynistic. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Chad is a motherfucker. Uh, everybody know it. Come on, man. You know, everybody know a Chad. Every, every last one of them got four or five actually. Chad might have 10 Chad friends that we've gone through and cycled through them through the years. Um, and I, I did. I ain't going to put his name out there, Quincy, but you know, I, I, <laughs> like, I feel like, I feel like, uh, I, I, I kind of honed in on like the, conglomerate of like all those chats that people know and I just took the like the most ignorant parts of them and just zoned in but it's really man it's I'm telling you man it's Prentice and all the writers on the show that really make because I feel like that's Prentice's avatar the, the show right uh, right uh, I feel like you know uh, uh that's his inner inner monologue um Chad uh so <laughs> so they did such a great uh, job of writing them and and they knew I could talk fast but I didn't know that like that, that comedy's hard, man. Comedy is very hard for me. I I, I give up. Thank you for saying time. that, by the way. Thank man. you. That, everybody not, tends to crazy. think it's easy. Listen, I'd much rather be shooting my gun, kicking people in the face, and doing my action stuff and drama. <laughs> Stand-up comedian, comedy's... you've ruined it. You make it look easy. <laughs> Especially you, no, Ryan. That's... You make it look so easy with your commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Those so writers, sweet. man, they really, they really make them um like dope like that and set them up like that. And even when I try to like slow down, like just a little bit, try to like go to another thought, they're like, no, 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 Neil. Um, so here's the thing. We want <laughs> to keep that tape. Just go back. You keep it up. You can't, it can't like, not even that, just, okay? Yeah. Right. Never never any stream of consciousness. Let, consciousness, let's go. And I'm like, I just learned this five minutes ago. So, <laughs> so they didn't um, care, they didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't care. They didn't they're care. like, yo, we got you for two episodes on a Saturday. We got to finish this one so we can go to the next one. Mm -hmm. and so, but, but, but it's dope, man. That, that character is so much fun to play. Trisha, you, it, bro. you, you are, you. you're from South Central. Yeah. So playing Thug Yoda, one would think that that came supernatural just by your upbringing. But when you came to do Wording is Hard, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you you couldn't be further from the truth. I found out that you you have a dog. You go walking. You do yoga. <laughs> you are not. What kind of dog? It, it's a small dog, right? Yeah, it's a Yorkshire Terrier poodle mix. Yeah, his name is, oh, you yeah, his name is Frito Yorkshire. Cornelius. Cornelius. Ah, ah. Frito Cornelius. Yeah. You, Frito you Cornelius. Cornelius. So you couldn't what? be further from. Hey, you name that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you name a dignified slave. You name that means is another indication that he could go further from it. <laughs> Cornelius. <laughs> but you <laughs> dog did. sounds like it sips wine. What kind of dog? <laughs> <laughs> He's a dignified he asshole. Let me tell you. He walks on his hind legs. <laughs> like, Let's go for the walk. He's like, 
Hey, <laughs> here, he'd be like, sit. The dog be like. Rough. Dog cross his leg. He sit on the toilet. Hey, what be like? He say Lee Wolf. Is that a just wolf? Le Wolf. Le Wolf. Le Wolf. Le Um. So I feel like your character is 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 um a display of your true um talent as an actor. But you you grew up in that. You grew up in in the midst of all of that, right? Yeah, man. Um, I live in the forties. If you know anything about uh, L.A. or gang culture at all, that's uh, rolling 40s territory. And I still live here. These niggas are outside right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to turn Bring in my, Cornelius my, right now. So speak. Tell, Cornelius? He's a, <laughs> he's, Come in, please. <laughs> he's taking a nap. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, my brother's dog just came over and scared the shit out of me. <laughs> brought it away. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like I live, I live in a like, so I live in a crip neighborhood. So like, I just kind of like, I, you know, I was just cold switching. Like I, I grew up in this area, like I got uncles and neighbors who are Thug Yoda. So I'm just like, all right, well, I'm gonna just be that side of me and be like, <laughs> and change them C words to B words and shit. Like I'd be walking <laughs> freedom, do walk down the street and shit. And they'd be like, hey, Trisha, right, let me talk at you for a minute, bro. Hey, we are real proud of everything you doing. I see you in them commercials, bro. <laughs> I see you in them fun motherfucking on Insecure on HBO and you with 50 Cent, my nigga. Nigga, that's crazy, bro. Keep keep up the good work. Hey, yo, nigga, make sure you get that shit from that nigga on the other side, all right? Hey, right, my nigga. You good, bro. <laughs> the, <laughs> no, listen, the commitment just now. We, yeah. we talked we talk briefly while you were on, on, on set about you growing up in a crip neighborhood but playing a full-fledged blood. Mm -hmm. and, no, big guys. Um, mm. how did they respond to you like in the 40s? This mm -hmm. is like here's the thing. This isn't like like LA has like 40 different crip branches, but 40s is one of the most recognized. So this isn't like just like some mom all type crip situation. This is a Clayton, bring your ass back here. Anytime right. we talk about anything, <laughs> mom and pop crip, is that what you said? That's yeah, what he like said. This isn't, I'm saying like, like you, know, you, you, you know how you got like mom and pop shots? Storefront, like, like small, storefront yeah. Crips? Yeah, this, this, is, this is a big crip, this is a big crip organization. So how did they feel about you living, still living in a crip neighborhood, but playing a blood? Nigga, let me tell you. <laughs> I knew when they found out because I was walking Frito down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I knew when they found out. <laughs> Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. When I'm walking down the street, I be they be like huddled up together, like hanging out on the block and shit. And they be talking. They be all loud and shit. Da, 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 da. But as soon as I pass, they quiet down. This happens every time I walk Frito down the street. This one time I was walking Frito, they did the same shit. I was walking by. They quieted down. And then I just hear, hey, blood. And then I turn and I was just like, hey. <laughs> 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 Yo, and so funny. I knew they were proud of me. I knew they were proud. <laughs> I knew they were proud of me. <laughs> dog is that little nigga. Like, what? <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> Ryan Davis, you are someone who uh started in comedy, um, yeah. had major success with um Facebook videos and, and, and commentary videos. Was acting something that was always on the radar for you? Was it always on the vision board, always on the goal no, board? No, 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 no. Writing is all I cared about. And um, I ended up getting an audition for Curb Your Enthusiasm. And- uh, Built it? Yeah, something like that. You know, I ain't- we ain't the show. About it before, you know? <laughs> But uh, Larry David, when I did the audition, it was fun. And I was like, nobody ever told me acting was fun. I was like, shit, I want to do this. I want to do this now. I called my agent and was like, send me to everything, nigga. It's whatever. Right. And then I regretted <laughs> it immediately because they sent me, <laughs> they sent me an audition for Insecure to be the TSA nigga who fucking Issa. Hilarious, the butt button? Yes, yeah. I was there, like, I said, send me, send me whatever. They were like, hey, you ready to get naked? I was like, it's my second role. Hey, them cheeks gonna be shown on that show. I'm second role ready for naked. This uh. <laughs> what is going on? 
Yo, and then, and then I, thankfully I didn't get it, but I guess they liked me enough to bring me back to read for something else. Yeah. And, uh, so it was great. But man, do y'all do this? Because, you know, I'm new to this. When somebody gets up over you, do you watch it and be like, man, I would have did so much better. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm watching the TSA nigga like, I'm way funnier than this nigga, yo. What's going on? But then when he said push my butt button, I was like, I'm glad I didn't get this role. Bro, that, that would that never was, end. That was that's the Someone has to actually get the role over me. So, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I get everything. I get everything. And Ryan, can you imagine being on stage and everybody yell that out before you start performing? Oh, nigga! Oh, that's the Ryan Butt Button nigga. Davis. <laughs> <laughs> that's your dog on my. Here's yeah, the thing. Right. The, the homie that played the TSA TSA Bay. He's a comic too. His name is uh, Reggie Conquest. He's from the, uh, from Philly. Isn't and really? I know him. when I saw him, I was like, yo, this is a nigga Reggie. Got the look down the park <laughs> shit. And I was super happy for him and shit. But I was like, I didn't know the nigga was going to be naked in like five minutes in the next scene. I was like, <laughs> oh, I didn't want to see Reggie the like that. Part. Bro. I think I get it. I think I get it if we read any of the other stuff. The original audition is the sex scene, nigga. They want to know right off the bat. If you if you comfortable in this setting, and I was like, yeah, this disqualifies me right <laughs> off the bat because I'm not. And then this is another part. I'm like, are they want me to be serious? And then I immediately realized they they want to want me to be funny. And I'm like, why the why the fat nigga got to be funny? Why the fat nigga can't <laughs> be sexy? Show, why can't I be sexy? <laughs> nigga, oh, oh man, it was the greatest thing ever though because I love the show. Love the I show. Agree. Absolutely. I want to watch uh, Misadventures of a uh, you know awkward black girl way back when you know what I mean. So I was I was looking forward I was looking forward to the show coming around and then having the opportunity to be on it. Man, it was it was a dream come true, man. It was a dream come true. No matter what, man. It, I uh, I wear that as a badge of honor, man. No matter how how many thousands of people end up doing it, it it's I got to be a part of something really special, man. So it was dope. Hey, to hear, I'll say this too, man. Um, yeah. When I did my scene, my first scene, we did a, the big, it was like a, a, a friend's dinner and we were at the table. And for me, I was actually terrified because I'm like, everybody there already had a rapport with each other. So you're yeah. the new face and my scene was last. Like we took my 13 hour days and then my scene. I think I done slept three times. I done ate up all the, <laughs> the snacks. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I done ate up all the snacks. I'm like, yo, this is tough, man. Like, but then I'm sitting there and Yvonne said something to me that like legit changed my life. And she, I was like, yo, I'm at the table right now. And I said, this is, this is a lot, man. And she was like, FYI, you at the table. And in my head in Hollywood, just like everything we're mentioning, we're auditioning with people we grew up loving as a kid. Like mm -hmm. we're in the room with people that we grew up loving. You know, we had a chance to see their entire career. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When I did the uh, thing as Nickelodeon, my Nickelodeon show, and I played mm -hmm. the dad, I went in after my man who played uh, Braxton on the Jamie Foxx show. And I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna get this. I'm not even, I don't even look like a dad. <laughs> And when I heard him yell at them kids, I heard him say, go to your room. I'm like, oh, Nickelodeon, you can't, the kids win. So mm -hmm. in the room, I'm like, I'm not, I can't do that because these kids need to win. And I was like, hey, go to your room. And <laughs> she called me back and I got it. You know what I'm saying? So the that sounds like that, a Nickelodeon dad right there. Nigga. Right. <laughs> it's right. all about the delivery. Go to but it's room. dope, man, because we're all in the middle of our Eat You Hollywood moment where we're like in route and we at the table with people we admire. Like the mm -hmm. fact that all of us are on social media and when people that you admire uh, you know, share your video or comment on your video. You're like, whoa, you know who I am? You know what I'm saying? It's a really dope feeling, man. It yeah. really is. And um, like, like for, I mean, for me, Ryan, Ron, and, and Clayton, we already had a rapport because of comedy. We, we, we've shared the stage with each other. So um, with Neil, like I built a rapport on set, but you never know, like if you're going to keep that friendship or nurture that friendship because, um, you know, once they once they yell cut, that that's a, that's the end for a lot of people. Unless y'all see each other on another project. So, the fact that he reposted videos and I I, I made one video about how people were fucking with me or saying something about me, I, it was all oh yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> and he he reposted it and laughed. He was like, y'all gotta lay up my homeboy and shit like that. But he didn't have to do that. Like like if it wasn't genuine, he wouldn't have done that. So you never know who's looking. You never know who really appreciates your work. And you never know who um, genuinely appreciates your addition to the craft. So uh, it's super dope that we take it seriously anytime we get that opportunity and realize 
how hard we worked to get there. Like, I got you know, a similar story to hear. I uh, had just got a follow from Neil. And I was like, oh shit, this the nigga that played Chad. And I, then I DM'd him, I was like, yo, big fan, thanks for the follow. He said, yo, who this? I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just go. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna I don't know why I play. I don't even know why I play like this. <laughs> nigga, block you. Hey, big fan, love your work. Did he block me? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, that ain't how it went down. It actually shocked me. It shocks me when anybody follows me, but especially when I'm a fan of their work. And, you know, like I said, I watch Misadventures of an Awkward Black Girl. So I've felt like I've known who Tristan was forever. Like I've actually <laughs> saw him before I saw any of you niggas. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, how, what year was that, bro? What was that so, like? Awkward Black Girl was two, started in 2011. Yeah, like a long time ago, man. So when I saw years. you, on Insecure, I was like, yeah, they, they pulled the nigga over. Yeah. 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 That's how I feel. It got transferred. Yeah. But, 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 everybody but, but, didn't make it over. Everybody didn't make it over. A lot of people why, did, why? but everybody did not make it over. If you're familiar, no, they didn't. You know. <laughs> but why the dude that he played, like the, the dude, the original dude, Tristan, that's why I like, I, when I got to set and I realized it was like the same dude, it, it bugged me out. I was like, oh, yeah. you're all right. Because the original dude, I knew that dude in real life. Like you say, everybody know Chad. I knew that dude, the quiet talker. <laughs> I know that he's, he was in my family for a while until my, until my uh, sister in law was smart enough to divorce him and get him out of his old quiet talker. Great to, but, hear. But, Great to hear. Uh, I was going to say, too, for you, man, like you were one of the first, first of all the comedians to actually be on that show, man. Like when I first saw you on there, bro, like watching one of my co-workers and one of my peers get that show like it was huge man for you what did that feel like to be one of the first comedians bro like that's major to be a comedian we all in the same class and you want to show that everybody love what did that feel like for you um man it was uh amazing first off let me say y'all get them likes up okay we got 1900 <laughs> people in here we only got 600 likes get the goddamn likes up that's number one number two <laughs> i want to so say casual. that um i will always give credit to my sister, one of my close friends, Meg Scoop, because I got the audition same day I had to audition. So I got the script the same day. I got it that morning. Nice. And this is when All Death was in Culver City and the Sony lot was literally like three blocks away. Mm -hmm. so I literally walked to the audition to do it. And I, I worked with Meg for literally like three hours out of that day, getting the script down. And I wasn't familiar with Issa. Like I had to do research that day. That cut into the three hours of figuring out who she was. So like it was it was great to to get that role. And I didn't realize how big it was. Like I didn't realize, I just knew it was on HBO. Like I thought I was gonna literally have one line and right. that'd be it. I had no idea I would be in two episodes or come back for a second season. I had no idea how big it was, but like uh, some of you guys have said to be on set and see everybody black. I'm, I'm talking about hair and makeup, caterer, first AD, uh, <laughs> producer, director, every, everybody black. And this was my first major production. So the fact that I had like somebody at my trailer, anytime I wanted to do, I wanted something, I just poked my head out. I'm like, hey, can I get a Mountain Dew? And they would go get that. Like, right. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> bro, Home service got seasoning? Wait, what is that? <laughs> I had never experienced anything <laughs> like that. So to be there on set with something like that, it was life changing and it, it made me want to write more because I've always just wanted to act, but it made me want to get behind the camera and get a part of that. I'm going to go Clayton, then Tristan. Uh, I just actually wanted uh, Tristan to finish his, I mean, I wanted uh, Neil yeah. to finish his thought because Ron cut the fuck out of that sentence, but oh, I want to hear the rest I apologize, man. of what you were saying. Sorry, bro. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah. I was just going to, I was going to let that slide. I know everybody don't get a chance to speak, you know, in, in, in public. <laughs> Oh, 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 my bad, bro. My bad, bro. It's a comedian show. It's a comedian. <laughs> 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 oh, that's right. That's right. For real, for real, for real. Um, um, no. Uh, uh, what I was saying was like that. You no, know, Tristan being both those dudes, and I and I knew that dude in my family. And that was the mm. thing. Like with watching Awkward Black Girl was like it was showing a bunch of people that I knew existed, but I never see on television. And that's one thing that I think you know Issa does. Well, that the whole show does with you know that they do with insecure is that like all these people that you know like well you know in your life and you don't necessarily see them on um, 
on te- te- network or cable television a lot. So I, right. I, 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 I love that. That you know, to the point, like you know, Tristan's character, my character, all all of us, like these, you know, they have these little things that you don't just really see in these, you know, in these other shows. So um, mm. that's what I was saying. I just, it, I mean, I'm I yield my time back to Neil. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Neil. I yield my time. Yeah. I got a white dude that did it, like to the dude at the LAPD. <laughs> I yield my time. Suck my. Y'all heard that? Huh. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. It is magic. He, he went off on the LA on the LA dude at LAPD. His white dude didn't skip a beat, just fire. Yeah. And then and the way he ended it was um <laughs> right. fuck my dick and choke on it. I give my time. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. how we ended the conversation. Oh, I find really? it I find it disgusting how you treat these people, how you do all this job <laughs> time. I get uh suck my dick and choke on it. I give my time. Fuck you. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I knew that. Wait, wait, wait. We haven't, wait, we, haven't we haven't talked about my appearance on this goddamn yeah, show. Yeah, we can't. Right, 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 right. Okay, I'm we'll do that right. real quick. But I want Tristan because he had his hand raised. We go Tristan, and then we go back to Clayton. Because this right. is ridiculous. I, I am, I am so offended. Go, go ahead, Tristan. I'm sorry about right. this disrespect. This, this episode. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> okay. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, I just, wanted to, I just wanted to bring up and piggyback off of what everybody was saying. Like Neil, like you, we texted. Like I remember when we did the the table read at HBO. And I remember up the, I saw that. And I remember at the corner of my eye, I saw you at the end of the table talking to Prentice, <laughs> talking to Prentice when I did my lines. You was like, <laughs> and then you came over and you, <laughs> and you like congratulated me. My brother's dog is going off, uh, and congratulated me and was like, yo, this is dope, man. Give me a number. Let's talk. Da, 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 da. This man, Neil, came to my 30th birthday party. Now, my. Did. My 30th birthday was May 12th. I shot my first scenes for television, which was on Insecure on HBO on May 11th. So for my 30th birthday, <laughs> I was on Insecure. And then this man, Neil, pulled up to my birthday party with his wife. He was like, ha I bet you didn't think I was coming, huh, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> and people was taking pictures. We were like, yo, it's a nigga, motherfucker, straight out of Compton. Yo, can we get a picture? And he was so nice and shit. He was posing for pictures and shit, smizing and shit. It was great. So thank you, Neil, for always, for always being a friend and shit. I smile. I smile. <laughs> I'm like, clearly you do. That shit from Beyonce. And like, yeah. Everybody <laughs> Neil's story better than mine. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait, wait, wait. Clayton, you got to play Tasha's cousin on Insecure. Um, what was that like for you, man? Like, like being on this show, on the second season of it, you're one of the early episodes. What was that like? Um, thank you so much for asking me that question, brother. That, uh, it came out of nowhere. You know, I, uh, doing the show Insecure, my Shut character. Shut the fuck up and just ask <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, what is this, is Love Line? He's like, he in the bubble bath. Nigga, nigga, um, get to it. <laughs> doing the show, you know, my character of Tasha's cousin, who literally had no name but Tasha's cousin on the script. Uh, it was a profound experience because, no, you know, it was dope, man, because for me, uh, I was just glad to book an audition after having a slump for like a couple of months. So for me, it was like doing the show. Um, Insecure, Issa Rae is like royalty right now, and especially at that time, because we as black men look up to her, black women look up to her, and she influences so many different cultures other than black. And I was like, man, I can't wait to meet her, you know, after hearing all this stuff about her. And then... Uh, being able to see, like to hear said, seeing all the beautiful black people, it wasn't really that for me because I'm on a black show. I've been on that black show for 10 years. So I'm like, all right, I see us all the time. But the thing that made Flexing, me happy good. was seeing uh, all of the black women who were in control. Like for me, I love that. I was like, yo, all these black women writers, all these black women producers, all these, like I saw editors. I'm like, what? And my episode was directed by a black woman, Marta. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. So uh, it was fun in that circumstance. But uh, the overall experience was just, you know, it was cool, man. I just love to see women doing their thing always. And the reaction that I got from doing the episode in as small of a time that I was in it was bigger than anything. I'm like in random play. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, man. Hey, hey, man. Hey, you killed that shit. I was like, all I said was, "Nigga, go get the plug." They're like, "I know, man, but how you said it? That <laughs> like, hey, you funny, man." Like the way you, with the with the, with the, the way the you inflection. Up at the end. That inflection, boy, you got me with that. 
I want to give like, a big shout out to my boy Reggie Conquest, aka TSA Bay, is in the motherfucking house. What, what up, up boy? Boy? What up, boy? Hey man, hey man, you like this nigga, man. You you're like most famous, <laughs> you're most famous ass on 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 Instagram right now. Hello, Paul. <laughs> Yeah, the trending. Hell up, Paul. <laughs> uh, they, they was, they was, they was killing me online, man. My fat ass was trending. <laughs> that shit was nuts. Hey, we we all talking about our twins with Instagram. I mean, uh, with insecure, man. Like, did you have to get naked in the um, uh, in 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 the goddamn uh, <laughs> in the room? No, I just, I just, I, I humped the stool. <laughs> yeah. I, I had to, I had to, I had to hump the air. That was it, and I was just being silly in the room. Uh, the audition part was was cake. It was just being silly. It was eight no people there. Me. Hey man, at least say it was difficult because I didn't go far in the audition, nigga. <laughs> I auditioned for the same role. Tell people it was really difficult, man. Don't do me like this. All you had to do was <laughs> hump the stool. <laughs> you ah. would have got it. <laughs> yeah, me too. The stool. No, nah, no, nah, it was. It was. It was just. I just. Ryan, you did the audition. You just had to say the lines, and I, I was just being silly in the room. That was it. He's telling you he did his best, and he did not get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you did him. Yeah, he was, he yeah, was said it. As a matter of fact, nigga, I didn't even bother looking at the lines. I was just like, let me get this chair and do what I gotta do. Uh, <laughs> nigga, make it sound difficult. Uh, <laughs> he, he was sitting with the other TSA babes. I had. Oh yeah, it was a room. Yeah, it was a room full of like uh, fat dudes, and we all was just sitting there. <laughs> yeah, all right. A room full of TSA yeah. babies. How did you say yeah, it was? <laughs> it was. <laughs> I man, I never knew it was that many bl fat black niggas in LA trying to get it. Like, <laughs> it was so many, nigga. It was so. It was like when you got there, it was like six leaving. You sit down with a new six. They are yeah. there to go, and when you come out, it's six more. I was like, man, that's eighteen fat niggas in the last yeah, hour. Yeah. That I was like, <laughs> I, I, I jumped right on the plane and took my fat ass right back to Philly. I ain't thinking of nothing. <laughs> Jeez, that's so funny. Yeah. You know what's oh. funny? I'm sitting there listening to this, and I'm looking at Neil and be like, <laughs> I'd never get fat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame you guys have to go through that. <laughs> oh, well. It, it was cool, that's though. That's it, hilarious. I think the I think the weirdest part was people was writing like think pieces on my 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 body and I was just like, I, they're, like, they're, like they're like you they're like you're so brave and I'm just sitting there like I don't, I don't really give a fuck. Yeah, they were calling me brave. Like, and that's all that shit. Up. Why we gotta be brave to be naked? That's uh, what uh, nigga, you've been in front of a mirror. You know why you have to be hey, 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 no, here. You're one of us, nigga. I know. You I supposed know. to be like, yeah, nigga, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. brave. Well, so here is like, no, no like, nigga, none of us wants to do that. Husky I mean, nigga I, rants. This is hilarious. I can say that because I've been in front of a mirror, nigga. I take a shower with a tank top on. I know what I look like. I don't know. I know America don't want to see this right here. Clayton, you know what? I'm fat. I swim with my I was, I was, I was, uh, I was, I was unaware until I seen myself like that. I was like, cause I, I got a beater body. Like when I got on a white beater, I, look, I, I thought I looked pretty good. <laughs> a beater <laughs> body. body. Yeah, I thought I looked good, like shoulders up, but I didn't even know that. Camera. I didn't even, I didn't even know that camera. I didn't even, I didn't even know it was more cameras in the room. I just seen one big camera, and then that shoulder. And I, I, I had no idea that mirror was there. It was going to show. I had no idea. Nigga, they got your midriff. They got, yeah, they, got they got the aerial shot. We they saw got everything. everything. Yeah, I, 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 they had a drone yeah. shot. They had a drone. <laughs> <laughs> had the Spike Lee shot of my hips. Like nigga, what? <laughs> oh, <man>. My <laughs> hips. <laughs> well, it was. It, it was. Side. It was a. It was a great side. experience. It was fun. It was fun. What was it like to be, on, to be? A, we have all just kind of talked about what it was like to be on set and see so many black people calling the shots down from the caterer to the hair and makeup to the cameraman to the first AD. What was that like? Cause I, Reggie, you've done other things too. So what was it like? Oh, uh, this was the first. Okay, I tried to give you some. My, no, 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 no. I ain't been on shit. That was my first. That was my first like on time on the set uh, experience. All that. So I was trying Naked. to pull out my phone. Look at Neil. I'm trying to sit back. Neil like. 
first mm. time. Yeah. Uh, Hilaire. <laughs> I, I was walking. Hey, guys. They had me. They had me walking through the set with like a, a brown fur robe. I felt like Rick Ross. I was just walking. <laughs> good ass naked with a robe on. Everybody was nice. Everybody was like helpful. So I was just happy to be there. Did you have hey, a fluffer? Hey. Stupid. Uh huh. Did you have a fluffer? You stupid. <laughs> uh, fuck no. My dick wasn't out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, were you self conscious about lotioning? Like you know, like, no, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. I didn't um, I didn't put on lotion? shit. This this how my mind was. I was like, all right, I get the home body I'm on camera. No, 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 no. no. I, I didn't put on no deodorant lotion. I'm like, if I put on that, Issa gonna be all over me. Like that's what I told myself. I went in there. I went in there. I went in there like musty, nigga, on me. Like, you in musty? No, I, I was fresh. I, was, I showered. I showered, but I'm like, I, I hope I don't put on the wrong shit. I don't want to break her out. I just was thinking way too break much. Her out? Yeah. I, I was thinking, you might have an allergic thinking, reaction to this lotion. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I had on Tessie. Uh, <laughs> I got a rash on my face. Nigga had on Tessie. Yeah, I was thinking way too much when I did the shit. So I went in there raw, like nothing. And then I um, got the set. Yeah, and I started, right. started asking for deodorant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they didn't put on deodorant, though. That's commitment. I ain't That's, put on shit. You out of control. But uh, aside so you from that, you gave her real TSA smell. Oh, uh, yo, <laughs> I have to say, because this is apparently, this is not for me. Uh, I just got sent a lovely donation from Chelsea that says, on behalf of the chat, damn for Neil. So, uh, baby girl, you might want to hit Neil with the cash app because I will not be your sloppy sex. You understand me? <laughs> I'm out here doing my goddamn thing in these glasses and this beater. Hey, I don't know you about y'all. Do? Do <laughs> Deny it. Send it back, CT. Send that shit back. And sweetheart, send it to me. My cash <laughs> app is actually on the bottom of my shit. I don't Neil real had quick. told you if you had listened earlier That's that so he not funny. taking it, but give it to Ryan. Real quick, I, real quick, um, Reggie, how long can you stay on? Because if you're gonna stay on, I'm gonna have you change your, your name to your cash app so the people can bless you a little bit. Oh, I'm I'm out there. I'm I'm in a car. Uh, you Uber and so you got okay. the I'm Uber and look. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, hey, Clayton, you got to get a client. Not you got to pick up a client. <laughs> I got two clients to get. That nigga just pulled up to the airport. He's about to pull. fly in right now. <laughs> no. I'm not. I'm not. Who said that? I'm, I'm not Uber in Philly. I'm not. I would never Uber in Philly. No. Just Philly, huh? So you go outside the Jersey for your shit. <laughs> you got to get a client real quick. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, listen, Reggie, oh. Thank you for oh. pulling up, bro. I really appreciate you. I hit you last minute. It was like, oh, no, you should have. Yeah, why you didn't hit me? I would have been bro, good on this shit. You know what? I, I, cool. I, I, I'm not in LA. Y'all don't fuck with me. I'm a dusty Philly nigga. I get it. Listen, it, <laughs> hey, oh. hey, don't you ever I'm, I'm say that, bro. Don't say it. that. I forgot, Even I forgot, though I that may be absolutely true, it's a here's <laughs> I, Don't say that while I all the people are watching. I, 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 I gotta Reggie. get the. I gotta get no. the LA. That's what Reggie, it is. I forgot. Hey I forgot Ryan, Ryan, he left him off the flyer too. too. Yeah. I, Ryan David, <laughs> I just. I. I can't oh, think of everybody. Right. I, Ryan, I he don't like, I, I he don't like chubby dark skin niggas. Ah. At all. He don't fuck with us at all. Look at that. He got look at the way this nigga drinking his drink. You ain't shit to him. You ain't shit. <laughs> what about your husky Yo, friends, though? Y'all be safe, man. All right, Yo, brother. Appreciate you pulling up. Later, Rich. Appreciate you, bro. Be safe, y'all. I, uh, that is crazy. I almost didn't even do it. I almost didn't do the audition. I forgot to tell that part of the story. I was in uh, Charlotte and then I flew to uh, DC to go to the Redskins 49ers game. I'm a 49ers fan. And um, niggas called me and was like, are you in LA? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they like, yeah, they got an audition for Insecure tomorrow, man. You know, you, you trying to do it? So I had to fly from DC to LA, no nothing. I didn't have nothing with me because I was just flying to the game, watching the game and then flying back to Charlotte. So I had to go from DC back to LA and I got off the plane and went straight. So I'm at the show looking like yesterday's game, nigga, in the audition. With the 49ers like, jersey on? Huh? I said with the 49ers jersey on? Man, just like- And the companion pants? Let, let's do it, <laughs> let, let's do it. I ain't have time to go home or nothing, nothing. <laughs> Smell like just six in my place. I knew I was gonna game. get it though. In the two times I've gotten so I just knew I was gonna get it. Is that the way y'all feel 
whenever yeah. y'all get something, you just like, you knew. Neil's like- Tristan, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. Oh no, wait, wait. Before, before Tristan, I want to talk about how Neil was like, no. I go in for a formality. I, I sign papers for the audience. <laughs> right. That's I do what I do. Only. Yo. I, don't, I don't even read the lines. I actually just do an inner monologue, whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> For an audition, I sat down and then I got up and walked out. Yeah. I literally like when... looked at everyone, got up and walked out. Got the part. Yeah, I, Couldn't do with... it. I was already working on it. I sit with the Vince's, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, it's funny. Hold up. This is a, that's a true story. That's a true story. Uh, Carmichael. At Gerard's show, when I went to audition and was messed up, is Rail already had the job? That was one of those situations. I shouldn't even went because Rail was already gonna have. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like, messed up. But I went in there and I sat down and I looked and I was like, oh, in my head. And then I left. Mm. And I and I left and I was like, because I had forgot my water bottle because my mouth feel like I ate a sweater sometimes. Mm. Mm. So I walked back in and Gerard was like, oh, if you had just stayed away, you may have just gotten the part right there. <laughs> Because that would have been the best audition of the day. Got to, comes in, sits down, looks at everyone, and then leaves. That's my audition piece. I, <laughs> wish, I, kinda wish, I kinda wish that's what I had done now since I didn't get the part. But I never mm. know. I never, I, I never know. I know just when something is weird, like when the producers and everybody are a little like, mm -hmm. hey, 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 and they're a little engaged. I'm like, that's different. Mm, right. that's they spoke to me. Other they spoke. They get the part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh... Christian, you were about to say something. Um, I'm tipsy. I don't know. Okay. I would assume you drank <laughs> olive oil and water just then. I ain't know what that was. I mean, that's what you're doing, right? You were drinking. I had, can we, can we address this? Can we address this? I'm like, is you drinking liquor out of a olive oil bottle? That was I olive like oil. No. I, I agree, Neil. I don't like the style that he has on the end. Olive oil to cut it. No. <laughs> he cut his head to see with that, olive oil. It does not go in a bottle that looks like that. If it At does, all. Look, <laughs> The bottle's not supposed to look like that. It's but, a hey, you bought the little thing the use. club spout too? They he sell that club spout. Yeah, they got the yeah, club. This nigga, like this this nigga, nigga giving himself bottle service. This <laughs> nigga, <laughs> yeah, nigga had a spark. His dog walking around with a sparkler. That is a bottle for cooking it's products. Your birthday. It's your birthday, nigga. It's your birthday, it's it's your birthday nigga. For for One time for the birthday crib. <laughs> 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 hey, that's hilarious, dog. Nigga, I knew one time I wasn't going to get the role. I auditioned for this upcoming Will Smith movie, and the nigga who went in before me, he was amazing. I was like, I he after he went out, and he was like, "Good luck, man." I went in there and was like, "Hey, that's the nigga. That's the nigga. I know the audition." I'm gonna do the audition. <laughs> but like, don't fuck this up. That's the nigga. Yeah, right? that's the guy. That, hey, Ryan, the I, best audition be the one back to the car. You be. <laughs> you had your audition, you stink it up, and then you, the one back to the car, you get everything right. You don't drop no line or nothing. You like, nigga, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> I should move back home right now. This ain't it. Nigga, <laughs> he, was, he was amazing. No, but it was the fun. It was the time that I, this is what that helped me realize, though, that when you're successful as a comedian, Ian, you still have to go up against full-time actors. Yes. You have to be just as good as them part-time as they are full-time. And that was a good, that nigga taught me a lesson. You hear me? <laughs> that, nigga, <laughs> that nigga taught me a lesson. I was like, I, I went in like I wanted the role. He went in like he needed the role. Two completely different attitudes. And that nigga <laughs> walked out of there and I was like, I was like, man, I can't wait to see you in this film. <laughs> bro, I remember, I'll give you this, bro. This was 2010. This was, this is why I have, first of all, I love Kevin Hart. He is one of the greatest people aside from being an incredible comedian and conglomerate in the world. But this is the one thing that I have beef with Kevin Hart about. This is 2010. There was a movie called Little Fockers. Okay. Now at the time it was this little, uh, this little junior agent chick that was working at CAA. And she was like, Oh my God, oh, CT, you're so funny. You should come in for this role. And I was like, let me tell you something. I don't have an agent. So whatever you tell me I'm coming in for, you understand? I go in for this audition for little fuckers 
I destroy the audition. Now, I don't just say that lightly. I say it because the woman who was casting it told me, you just destroyed this audition. I say, wow, the people never tell you that. She says, yes, the only way you're going to get this role is if the person we have an offer out to says no. I say, okay, well, who is it? She said, Kevin Hart. I said, thank you for even seeing me, you know? Because uh, <laughs> uh, I knew Kevin was going to say yes. He's like he said, yeah, every Sam day, every Jackson. Day. He says yeah, it all. Said, yeah, yes. hey, Clay, Man. I yield my time back to Kevin. Thank you so I much. I yield my time. Thank <laughs> you. I yield my time back to Kevin. Thank my- you so much. Damn, I destroyed that shit too, boy. <laughs> Um, (laughs) that happens a lot in this industry man Mm. um tell your no boy story to here which one tell the no boy story oh man (laughs) let me set this up for y'all hold on man before you get to the story in 2016 uh, I'm on a I'm on a television show called Family Time, right? And my character at the time was giving was being given a spinoff. So when the character was being given a spinoff, you know how it happens. The network changes presidents, and then it's like, oh, this goes by the wayside. So yeah. anyway. Uh, I get this spinoff and now I get the opportunity to have my friends come in and read for the roles. <laughs> so I have no boy and Tahir come in. No boy. I mean, uh, Tahir, go ahead and say what happened. So I go in for the role. <laughs> <laughs> Making them relive really this trauma. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. I go in for the role. I've, 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 I've studied the script. I know the script and I, I'm familiar with this production company. They like me. They like me to be me all the time. So I brought me to the audition. I went to the audition, killed it, uh, felt great about it. And as I'm going out, I'm gripping everybody up. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I go to somebody else and I won't say the person's name, but they'd be like, nigga, you got the rope, right? So I knew I had booked it, right? I leave there because I'm feeling good. I treat myself to some Chick-fil-A, okay? I don't get in the drive-thru, I park and go inside. <laughs> I know I got it. I know I got it. I treat myself. I'm sitting the there eating front my you, Chick-fil-A. I got the, the sandwich, you. the nuggets, and I got the uh, the lemonade ice cream mix. So I'm, I'm, I'm having a great time. I'm dipping uh. phone call. It's dope, boy. Boom. What up, bro? He says, uh, hey, man, listen, bro, I heard your audition because I was outside the door. I just want to say, man, listen, bro, if you don't get this one, you know, just keep your head up, man. I heard the whole thing. I feel like it was kind of charactery. I think you need to ground yourself a little bit more and try to, like, figure out what you really want to bring to the audition. The Doughboy. And Doughboy. The Doughboy. The Doughboy. The Doughboy. The Doughboy. The Doughboy. Man, that makes this story a million times oh, funnier now. I know this story. I love this story. <laughs> he's saying, he's saying, Continue, he's please, saying, sir. Continue, you please. Ground yourself a little bit more. You know, make some stronger decisions when you're going in the auditioning. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually about to go in right now. He's but listen, I'll call you afterwards, man. Just, you know, keep your head up. I'm like, all right, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Polynesian sauce. All right, my nigga. Right. Tap, tap, tap. Right. Tap, so, tap. Fast forward three so. days later, he finds out I get the role. He was like, you knew you had the role? When I called you, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I knew the whole thing. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so glad it turned out that way, because I was about to be pissed. Uh, Ooh, I was pissed that you were going to be bad. Thank you, I'm glad it turned out that way, because I was about to be bad. <laughs> and this nigga gave you acting advice and then beat you for the role, nigga. Oh my God. I was about to go troll this nigga right now. Oh, God, <laughs> It was so funny, bro. He was no, giving the right advice. I, I heard your audition <laughs> through the door. And not to criticize you to hear, but uh as a award-winning ox, as an award-winning actor as myself, you may have saw me and you might have saw my role in uh Wild and Out. Uh, you might you might have saw my role on all deaf digitals, uh me and Teddy Rays. Does this taste good? You can see you can't that tell how I feel. Good about whether it tastes good or not <laughs> until it's time for me to give my opinion. Oh, Jesus. And I in his like defense. You the gun a lot in your reactions. Yo, in his uh, defense, though boy did end up getting on the show as well. But it was hilarious at the fact that he told to hear some advice and didn't even book the role over him. Classic. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Did you reply Ooh. back? No, it was in person. No, no, yeah, it was on the he phone. Called me, he called me on the phone. We were talking on the phone. No, we after you got work- it, did you talk to him and say, hey, yeah, look. Yeah, 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 we were both working at All Def Digital at the time. So when I when he came in, because I always went to work early, he came in, he was like, you had already knew you had got the role, didn't you? I was like. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
<laughs> Why you ain't stop me from talking? I was like, nigga, you seem passionate about it. <laughs> <laughs> you seem passionate. I wanted you to get that out. You need to get that to. Out. express yourself, uh, brother. You needed that moment more than I did. <laughs> Uh, that was for you. It wasn't for me. That was. I, exactly. I do want to know something though. I um, like I do have a question. Neil actually got to work with the late great Bernie Mac. Bro, mm. what, what was that like? Oh, Bernie was the coolest man. Bernie was the <laughs> truth. Bernie had so it's a one of those little trivia's. Um, I got real hard hands, right? Like I take a lot. I, if I slap you, you gonna get it. <laughs> Why is that the first example? Why can't it just be I can grab the shit out of a doorknob or I can unscrew a can? I have a rough handshake. A rough handshake with a done. Just smack is the Hey CC, like, this nigga's a killer. Only a killer, only a killer would say that. He got guns, nigga. He got guns. Okay. <laughs> hey, if I slap you, brother, you're gonna miss your birthday. Let me tell you something. Anyway. <laughs> hey, low key, when Neil went to go audition for Swaziel, <laughs> that nigga just took his guns up there. It was like, you got the part. <laughs> I took my guns and I slapped people. I slapped every last one in the room. Um, no, but, but but and so you know, I'm I'm you know you know you play slap games and stuff like that, and, you, and sometimes I slap people hands and they always go ow ow because they don't expect it. <sighs> Bernie slapped my hand and it was like my granddaddy's slave master. <laughs> Rainbow <laughs> right hands. Hit, <laughs> bro. I mean. He kept slapping too. He was like, give it to me, give it to me. He was like, <laughs> he kept and he kept bamming. And I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> We're done. We're done. No one We're done. slapped my hand. Because I'm not used to feeling the, the pain of it's like my daddy hands like that. So um, so that, that was our first introduction because that was the first scene. And then um, we had a bunch of scenes together. Um, a lot of the stuff got cut because I sucked. But other no. than that, it was really cool, man, being around him. He had so much information to give. Um, what project, project was this? Um, this was uh, Mr. 3000. I, oh, I, I, I nice. seen the movie like, before. Hey, Clay, Listen. That was, no. A simple Google in no. your phone would have killed that. No, you, you know what that's not going to do? We in the what? middle of the moment. I'm not about to disrespect this brother by looking down on my phone. And number two, do you know how many pieces of content uh, I've consumed it? in the past 20 years? I couldn't dare just. I should have Googled it. You're absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Fucking rookie. Let me get the fuck out of here. So I'm long. embarrassing it myself. Was, Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, man. It was, it was a special time because I got the, I got the call as I got a call from this dude that like, you know, I had this offer kind of like of a job, but then like it got kind of messed up. And then the dude kind of like brushed me off. And then like three weeks later, I was filming that. I had gotten mm. a part filming that movie and he happened to call me and apologize. He was like, yo man, realize that I was wrong about this. And you really, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So can you do this, man? Cause we got you set up. And I'm like, mm. nope. so I'm filming this movie with Bernie. Ah! <laughs> but, Hey man, you know, just keep, just keep moving. Just keep yeah. moving. <laughs> In there, buddy. <laughs> like, it was, it was, no, I flexed a little bit. I ain't getting no work after that for like six, seven months, but in the moment, <laughs> killed it. Hey, man, good. Let, me, let me just take a break and say how honored and privileged I feel right now to have you gentlemen on this show and being here, sharing your truth telling the people what it's really like, because we're, 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 we're giving them both sides of Hollywood, but we're also giving a lot of our wins. Um, I kind of want to go into what it's really like. Like, we're talking about the stuff that we have, but we've all been out for so much stuff, with the exception of Neil, that we have not got. And we have to deal with those, those feelings of rejection and still be able to push through and wake up the next day and go just as hard, if not harder, than the day before. So with that being said, I would love for Tristan to kick this off. Ooh, we. <laughs> so so after I booked Insecure, like I was I was on Cloud Nine, shit had three episodes in the first season, um, <clears throat> and I actually signed with uh, the same agency as Neil. Like I got signed with them in uh, January 2017. Signed with them, and I was excited as fuck. And then they hit the ground running with like getting me auditions for pilot season. I was doing three to four auditions every week the entire pilot season and i killed every audition that first year and when i say killed i mean i actually murdered it as in they fucking hated me every single <laughs> audition <laughs> brilliant I no man. callbacks 
my manager would call <laughs> my manager uh uh got me my agent um he would call to get mm-hmm. feedback and they would just be like yeah he just uh he wasn't in it uh he wasn't you know he was in the room but he wasn't in the character um mm-hmm. he was in a different genre and i was mm-hmm. like Fuck. <laughs> it was a big hit to my ego that shit sucked Mm. It's so bad. And they then said I took it a was a different genre, nigga. Mm. God <laughs> damn. He was playing jazz. We were more of an R&B feel. Mm. It was like, yeah, this is single camp. No, they were like, this is multi cam, and he just didn't couldn't keep up the pace. Uh, mm. The was like, okay, cool. I'll take these notes, and then I started taking acting classes. But then even still, it's like you you have to go on a hundred auditions to get one yes, and that's and I was with um and that was with my theatrical agent and with my commercial agent and that shit sucked every time and then like i remember so the very the last sucking moment was this past january um even after bigger like this past january i auditioned for a movie that's going to be so fucking tight it's a western it's got dope ass black people in it who have won academy awards that's all i can say but it's a black western that shit is the shit and i went in to read for it and that was the day that I got COVID nineteen. So oh. I, <laughs> this is this is January. So oh. I was like, why do I feel like this? Dude. And all of a sudden, I'm in the room, and it's and I and I was sitting in the um in the waiting room for about forty five minutes past my actual audition time. There was one person in the room who probably got it. We'll probably see the deadline article soon. Um, he was, <laughs> in, the, <laughs> he was in there for a long ass time. Yeah, <laughs> and like. This other dude that was in the waiting room too, and this nigga was wearing some kind of cologne. This nigga had on uh, LaMail fucking uh, Gaut- <laughs> Jean-Paul Gaultier cologne or some shit, and it was fucking mm. killing me. And I go out, I go in a room and audition, and I'm fucking still like, <clears throat> can't breathe and shit. Like, I think I swallowed one of Neil's sweaters or some shit, mm. and I just fucking couldn't talk and shit. And, um, ooh, I almost said her name. Uh, the, mm. uh, the casting director, she was like, let's go again. Mm. she's so sweet she's so sweet let's take a breath i was like okay mm. <sighs> do the audition again i felt like i bombed left and i was like all right i'm sick i'm about to go home and as soon as i got home um i was in the bed sweating bullets because i was sick as fuck mm. but yeah like even when you are on the show when you're you know series regular or whatever doing shit it's like you can still like you still need to like work on this shit you still mm. gotta go through because I want to I want to be where like Neil I I I admire you a lot like I like the action shit so I'm like I got a trainer now I'm doing training and shit because it's like I want to do action movies and be like a dope actor at the same time so it's like you still gotta work for whatever the fuck it is that you need and that and that you want so yeah man you gotta suck until you don't suck until you don't Damn, bro. I, I, I see you did that I see I see you did that <laughs> shit yeah, that was that. That story has so many ups and downs mm. with the with the COVID and the not getting it and getting. I don't. I still don't know if he actually got it from the story. I, I really don't know. But no, he uh, still got it. It's just not affecting him anymore. But he went through that. Is what we trying to get through. <laughs> Whew. Brother, let me tell you something, man. First of all, I love hearing stories like that because obviously you're extremely successful and you're going to continue to be blessed in everything that you do. Oh, thank you. But one of those, these are just like facts. But bro, that, i give you one, man. I, uh, not bigger. Bigger didn't hurt because it was one of those things like, ah, I should have been smarter. The thing that hurt me, bro, is I think a couple of months prior, I had gotten to i got reached out to for this show that is coming out in two months right it's gonna be a massive show i promise you that i'm not even gonna say the name of it, but it's a massive show and the guy who the producer of the show reached out to me like he dm me on ig and it's random he's like you know whenever you get a message on ig you're like this isn't real or whatever he's like hey man i'm doing this tv show it's gonna be on said network and i think you're perfect for it because everybody keeps telling me that this character is you i'm like yeah all right man hit my hit my agent up brother it'll be great to come in whatever i find out it's official i go in for the audition it's cool the process is solid i'm testing for the show and at the test I'm like, oh, man, they seem to love me. Like, everybody in the room is rocking with your boy. 
I'm about to go on stage. I say this, this isn't a name drop. This is just to tell you my frame of mind for what was about to happen. So I had been blessed with the opportunity to go on tour with Martin Lawrence, right? So I'm mm. on tour. These are arenas of uh, like 20,000 20, people yeah. on I, the- I got you. <laughs> <laughs> you. 20,000. This is an thousand. arena of 20,000 yeah. people. I have to go on stage. So I, you know, I'm talking, I get a call because the, the producer said, yo, no matter what, if it's good or bad, I'm going to call you and let you know what the studio says. I say, cool. He calls me. I'm like, here's the call that's about to change my life. <laughs> because at this point, I'm like, I'm ready to graduate. Like I've done, I've paid my dues with acting and stand up and writing. Like I've put in my 10,000 hours this time. So I picked the phone up. I said, hey, what's up, man? He's like, hey, man, how are you? I say, fuck. I already know what that tone of voice is. <laughs> fuck. I say, what's up, man? He's like, so the, uh, the network loves you but the studio feels uh. that you're too nice i say literally what he's like yeah you're too nice they feel like you and uh such and such have way too much chemistry and they want the character to be more uh disrespectful i say let me tell you something right now i was only being nice because that's the act i am an asshole like let's let's start there. <laughs> and he's like yeah man but uh you know i'm gonna bring you on the show but just not for that role and it crushed me because i was literally five minutes away from them saying ladies and gentlemen coming to the stage clayton oh. thomas so uh, i had to turn my energy around to entertain these people when i felt like that was the last opportunity that was going to get me and plus you know how we've all been there financially i was like bro this x amount of dollars per episode could change my life and it yeah. didn't i got rich later but it was it was a longer process go ahead to hear what you're about to say i like that, how you added that i got rich later that was it, it happened later, right, but it did happen casually too casually no, but I, I wanted to before to hear speak, man i wanted to say a lot of people don't understand as comedians we have to go make people laugh no matter how we fucking feel it does not matter how we feel. I could the worst thing, like I, I did the weekend with Corey Holcomb and knowing I had to go bury my uncle the next day. Uh, like that uh, was and and I had to try to stay away from COVID in Atlanta because niggas don't care nothing about COVID in Atlanta. Niggas, no, nobody had a mask on. <laughs> and I just had to whole free just add all that up and put together a good show, man. So just just hearing that. You know, I, I know you to be a super dope comedian, Clayton, but it's just, I love hearing those stories because the rest of the world, I don't think, I think as entertainers, they don't see us as people sometimes. Right. And, uh, make me laugh. You know, that, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Make me laugh. laugh. Yeah, Kanye did to David Chappelle. I'm like, nigga, don't ever do that to me. <laughs> I hated that. I feel like hey, David Chappelle's gonna roast him so bad, but it wasn't the right time. It wasn't because oh, he's gonna come out on the special. What he really oh, wanted to say is gonna come out on the special. Believe it. He asked me. Yeah. Like right now, right now, I came here to help you. You worried about a joke? Okay, nigga. Bro, it's like here's the thing: when you get put on the spot as an entertainer, especially as a comedian, you don't like if you say be funny right now. It's like, first of all, I thought I was already, and then. <laughs> <laughs> to right. go forward, it's like, bro, this is uncomfortable. I, um, to speak to what Ryan Davis just said, um, and I'll circle back for the audition after the, the next couple of people go. Um, to do comedy is, is, is really a labor of love. You mm -hmm. really have to love that. You, you can't like it. You really have to be in love with it. And I imagine that's, that's the same with any, any profession. But with typical jobs, like if you're a doctor or you're a teacher or something, like you're having a bad day, you just got some bad news, you can take off. With comedy, you have to still go on. I was going to St. Louis for my sister's wedding. Mm -hmm. I managed to finesse a weekend at a, at a comedy club um, while I was going to be there. So I was going to do th Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, that Wednesday and that Tuesday, prior to me leaving, I was supposed to be the warm up for the reestablishment of Dev Comedy Jam. Oh, I was here for that. Tuesday, I I do the warm up. Ah, ah, I I ah. for Dev Comedy Jam. I I did not get it, but they hit Ooh. me up. Was like, yo, you Another didn't get story. it, but we would love for you to warm up. I'm like, cool. I'll warm up the crowd. They're doing three three shows in the night. 
I'm like, cool. I'll I, I warm up the crowd. I'll I, 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 I manage with that. I do the first show. And I kill it. I mean, I have a fantastic show. The crowd loves me. I'm having a great time. I'm in the back. And I'm like, man, something don't feel right. Like, I just, I don't know. I don't know. It might have been nerves. might have been anxiousness. I don't know. I was going through a lot. But I'm sitting down and I'm talking to Clayton. I'm like, yeah, man, my heart just feels kind of weird. He's like, your heart feels weird. I was like, yeah, it'll pass, though. You know, it, it, it does it sometimes. It doesn't do that sometimes. Um, <laughs> Clayton was like, maybe you should go to the hospital. I was like, nah, I got two more shows. I'm not going to the hospital. He's like, nigga, okay, I'm going to go get the medic. Anytime they're filming a major production, there's a medic on set. He goes to get the medic. The medic takes my blood pressure, takes my heart rate. Everything is escalated, right? It's elevated to the through the roof. So I'm like, I'm good. I'll be okay. He was like, listen, I can't make you go to the hospital, but I strongly recommend it. The producer and the director, who is Stan Lathan, who is one of the biggest names in comedy right. in the Black community and Hollywood mm -hmm. community ever, he's like, go to the hospital. I go to the hospital. Clayton, go, he follows me to the hospital. Go to the hospital. Farron comes up there. They, they put me up to EKG. Everything is fine. I had a power. I had an energy drink. And I don't know why it had that effect on me that day, but that day it had that effect on me. So I'm at the hospital for about 45 hour and 15. Um, I leave the hospital. I rush back to the, the venue. The second show was over with. I'm trying to get back before the third show. Third show just started. They had already put somebody up there. My good friend, Nate Jackson, they put him up to, hold, to, to do the warm-up spot. So I'm like, fuck it. All right, I'll come back tomorrow. They say, come back tomorrow, man. You're good. Don't even worry about it. Go home, get some rest. Come back tomorrow. I you're fully rested. I, I go to therapy, which would be Wednesday, I go to therapy. Um, and I leave therapy. And as I'm walking to my car, I get a phone call and they say, Hey, um, the producers of the show say you don't have to come. I was like, wait, what? Nah. It's like, yeah, you, you don't have to come back. I was like, well, I'm right down the street. I'm leaving therapy right now. I'm going to come right there for the dress rehearsal. I'm like, yeah, it's cool. And here's the thing, the producer of the show, Ryan Davis, you know who it is. Um, my manager. It's my, my manager, it was a, first of all. It was somebody that has my, my number. Right, and you so fucking call. messy. I don't care. I don't care. I don't play. You know I don't give a fuck. No, it's not about that. <laughs> finish, finish the story and I'm going to say this. Go ahead. So I'm like, I felt some type of way because I felt slighted. And I also felt like, damn, this is my friend. He could have called me and let me know, like, let me down. He didn't. So I'm like, fuck it. It worked out because I ended up having to fly to Vegas that night anyway, because the flight I was going to catch on Thursday to get to St. Louis was overbooked. My brother had got me the ticket, so I flew to Vegas that night, uh, spent the night in the airport, and flew out to St. Louis Friday, I mean, Thursday morning at 5 a.m. I board the plane at 5 a.m. I sit down in my seat. My mom calls me. She said, how was the filming? I said, it was cool. I didn't get to finish it. Some stuff happened. I'll tell you when I get there, whatever, whoop de whoop she was like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I was like, wow, what's going on? She said, um, I held off telling you your dad died because I didn't want to mess up your energy for HBO. So I'm on this plane Jeez. finding out my dad died uh. Thursday morning. I land. My sister picks me up. We go grab something to eat. I'm a wreck. I go meet my mom. We get the flowers and everything for the funeral. The funeral is Saturday. I still have to do the show Thursday. I do the show Thursday. I do the show Friday. I go to my sister. I go to my, my, my dad's funeral on Saturday. I leave the funeral from Cape Girardeau, drive an hour and a half back to St. Louis, go do my go to, go to my sister's wedding, which I was originally going to St. Louis for, do the wedding, do jokes at the wedding, do two shows on Saturday. I did two shows on Friday too. Two shows on Saturday and still had a Sunday show to do. That is the life of a comic. Hmm. I'm dealing with grief and I'm dealing with the joy of my sister starting a brand new union. And I'm dealing with the hurt of a friend not calling me to tell me that they, they don't need me back for this project. I'm dealing with all of that shit and I still have to make people laugh for 30 minutes, twice hmm. on Friday and Saturday once on Thursday and once on Sunday. Six shows, 30 minutes each, making people laugh while I am going through a clusterfuck of emotions. 
completely destroyed. That's what being a comedian is. Yeah. When you say the part about the, this is the only part that I'm, first of all, <laughs> man, when I tell you that was heavy as fuck, let me tell you. So living it with them, of course, is different when you actually, spring you like, damn, to actually hear that shit in real time. But also nobody could ever measure what he's going through personally. Right. But to speak to the Dev Jam part, it was like, he, first of all, anybody who knows Tahir, Tahir is a huge worrier and he's an extreme hard worker. He always works first and that's all he sees. So in the moment of him saying his heart was feeling funny, and he was like, yeah, but I'm still do the shows. I'm like, motherfucker, you might not make it to the end of the shows. No, no, no. But you know what I'm saying? I said, I'm a, I said, I'm a perform and I want to perform. I was like, brother, listen, man, this shit is going to be here. This is just a warm up spot. I know you want the bread, whatever you're going through right now. Don't think about that shit. Your health is most important and you're going to get way bigger opportunities. And I think all of us have been through a point where we don't see what other people see. We're in this mm -hmm. tunnel of if a, if I got told I was getting paid X amount of dollars, that's what I need to fix my problem. And you telling me that I'm going to make 80 million times more than that in a week. I don't, I hear you, but I don't give a fuck because right now I need this. And I think that's what he was experiencing. And I'm like, bro, you're going to be such a huge star that this little bullshit ain't going to matter a year from now. Right, and let me right, tell you right. something. I hate to say I told you so, but brother, that little bullshit didn't matter a year later. <laughs> right. I'm just telling you. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead bro. Go ahead, Ron. Huh? Oh, I thought you was going to... I was going to say something, but I didn't want to cut you off. Um, oh, like hmm. I was there... You know what I mean? <laughs> Wait a minute, Mill, you an asshole. <laughs> Go ahead, Ryan. I, I, I just want to see anybody guess. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid, bro. I was, I was there, and uh, you know, I actually did make it on the show because my stand up is very strong. This <laughs> nigga. <laughs> <laughs> This nigga, it's you gotta make him laugh. That nigga <laughs> made this sad ass, horrible story. This nigga had me about to cry. I had to just, I had to just add some levity to the situation. Ooh. But nah, I, I was there, and um, there was a real concern for your health to hear. So it wasn't like, you know, people. I don't want you to think that people had pulled away from you, and that was the thing. Because whenever I had the conversation, there was there was true concern about your health. And there was a thought of that you were going to perform no matter what, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of, yeah, instead of taking care of yourself first. And as a friend, they cared about your health more than that situation. And, and to hear you tell the story from that perspective is like, I completely understand why you felt that way, but I promise you it was 100% about your health. Yeah, man. And if you look like now, I mean, look, we're all business owners. <laughs> so let's yeah. talk about business. <laughs> right. Brother, if you would have died on that set under my business, now I got to pay out some millions. I need your right. ass to fuck off this goddamn set. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're good, Tier. You're good. You know, no, you're good. What it was in that moment, that was one of the biggest things in my life. Mm. Because the pay that they were paying me, it wasn't right. anything extreme, right? What it was was the opportunity to be a part of a legacy. Like Def Jam for comics is right. It's 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 it's, it's Harvard. It's the Olympics. It mm. is everything that we strive to be and, and want to be a part of and be associated with. So even though I wasn't on the show, it's like I'm still a part of the show mm -hmm. because I'm getting to warm up. And so to have that stripping from you like stripped. I just, it's just stripped. I get okay, you. So, Okay, <laughs> but in the end, Russell fucked all of us in the end anyway. So I mean, if, if you, yeah, if you, I mean, if you didn't miss <laughs> nothing. Ah, geez, everybody ain't gonna say it, no. but then you know, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> nigga. You know, so you know, I got a I fan base wait, 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 who carry me. I don't, don't I don't give a fuck about how, stepping on toes. How, hey, deal. How, this shit ain't got nothing to do with you. On, wait, wait. I, don't cover your face, nigga. This you are not. The you what I'm know. seeing, no. The, no one no. else is responsible for no. any of the no. words no. that I use. Wait, Anybody who knows me what? is what? not what? responsible. Clayton, you can you can get off, but your picture is still on there just to let you know. <laughs> so screenshot it for What I'm too. going to say is what I'm going to say is <laughs> the do deaf the do deaf comedy jam and them to bring it up and it was bring it back and it was supposed to be the chance of a lifetime. And my nigga Clayton Thomas, it ain't even fuck me. Fuck me. I ain't even have that great of a set. My set was straight. Clayton Thomas got a stand to know. Just yes, needs got a stand yes, to know. Did. What it would have done for their careers 
And then Russell just, he was supposed to be the person to do all the promo. And then the whole Me Too movement happened or whatever. And then the promo didn't happen like it was supposed to. And people didn't see it like it was supposed to. I'm over here like, thank God, because I wasn't happy with my set. People hit me all the time and go, that <laughs> shit was hilarious. I was not happy with it at yeah. all. But niggas <laughs> like Clayton, I, to this day, it, we filmed it in 2017. I still watch it in 2020. When I tell you this nigga Clayton murdered, if you have HBO Go or Hulu, go look up all deaf comedy see, <laughs> in a season. Look at episode one. And just watch this nigga absolutely <laughs> obliterate. He had one of the best sets of that season. I was yep. there. Yo, I thank you, man. My friends, yeah. it. Thank and, and God Ryan, I didn't see him do it in real time <laughs> because I would have been so nervous. I would have pissed on myself. I was like, that's the standard? That's the standard? <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan, I appreciate you being humble, though, but I was in the audience, too, man. You, you rocked it, bro. You did your thing, man. So I appreciate the humility, but that, yeah. You yeah, he, he obliterated. About. So... Yeah. So to hear you missed out, you missed out on the opportunity, but at the same time, your name isn't tied to that whole situation right, like right. that, like ours was. We got all deaf comedy. <laughs> it ain't no presents. They cut out all the God bless you, good night. They cut out every <laughs> single bit of what makes it. We are on the deathless deaf comedy jam, nigga. Like you you know? the deaf, the deaf, <laughs> <laughs> the mute, mute comedy jam. Yo, yeah. bro, it's a here, me, bro. It, it was a blessing in disguise. Of your heart was telling you, "Hey, man, you don't want to be a part of this." That's what was. <laughs> that was what that was, nigga. <laughs> hey, uh, to hear Ryan and Clayton, man, uh, just salute to y'all, man. Because again, I had a chance to watch all all y'all grow, man. Uh, the thing I had to learn, tying back to what you said about uh, Clayton, you getting bad news, Ryan, your uncle, and to hear, man, I feel like we have to learn the art of performing, even when we uh, one you have to learn to perform tired. That's an art by itself. Performing tired, like when they add that third show on Saturday. Mm. And then also we got to remind ourselves to feel and live while we chasing this dream. Uh, one thing I, I wasn't always good at was, you know, you see carbon chasing the dream. You don't give yourself time to feel, which is why we deal mm. with depression a lot. You know, we can turn it off and on when we go in that audition room and we can turn it on when we get on that stage, but we go through so much trauma, especially, especially just being black men mm. and living this life. And the amount of no's you go through as a black man in Hollywood from uh, being stand up to auditioning, to just being a black man, and you don't give yourself time to feel. And that's one thing I had to work on is like, taking time off like from this thing, like this social media, you always comparing yourself and you know, you're looking at people's videos, and you're like, yo, they doing well, and it'll make you, it'll make you sick. So, but if you don't make time to live and love and like find your, your find marriage and find out things you like to do outside of this thing, man, it'll trap you and it'll suck you in and there's no end to it. So again, salute to y'all, man. Cause we, we legit superheroes the way we process and the way we do life, man. So salute to y'all. Man, Ron G almost, Ron G was the first comedian, first of all, uh, Richie, is he, uh, you see that? Does anybody else see yeah. that? That's just me. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna say this before you yeah. introduce to it. Um, Ron was the first comedian that I saw to buy a home off of stand-up comedy. I had never, like we see the comedians who came before us do all this crazy shit or big actors that we are familiar with that might've done a movie with, but Ron- but Ron was on this college tour and he was the guy you add this third show. He was, was on the Black road. History Month comedian. Every, every day, college in the world. This dude was driving everywhere. He bought a home off comedy and he literally was going through health shit because he wasn't getting enough rest and time for his body to recuperate. Right. Mm. And you'd be excited on the other side. Like, man, I can't wait to go on tour, but going on tour by yourself. Ooh. See, at least y'all get a chance to go on tour with your friends. But me going by myself, bro, I was sick, man. My life fell apart and I'm like, the house is the receipt for the hustle. Mm -hmm. But what mm -hmm. I went through, I, I, I remember having a meltdown in my hotel room. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what day it was, what city I was in. You know, all my friends stopped calling me because I was never home. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God, I want to experience love. And that was the first time I ever had a real relationship. But I didn't ask for a wife. I asked for love. And I got that until I was like, God, I need a wife. Like, this is what it is. But um, I remember that moment, man. It taught me a lot. <sighs> you know what I asked for? I asked for 2020 Tupac to show up on this on this group. And it happened. You don't know, you know get until you ask. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, you know what? It make yeah. this thing more dope if Tupac pop up right now. <laughs> 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 Nigga, this is great. 
I appreciate it. <laughs> Hilarious. Do come true. Yeah. Do come we true. have uh, just coming into the, the Zoom, we have Richie Loco, a.k.a. High C, a.k.a. your favorite crib. Um, Rick, Richie has an amazing story, too, because one, obviously, he was on uh, Insecure. Anybody on the show tonight is on Insecure. But he's another one who his character and also the character he's played on Instagram it couldn't be further from the truth. Ricky, the Ricky, nicest guy. About, right. yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> so here, the is most, he on the flyer? The nicest, the but also, also <laughs> the most disciplined guy. <laughs> one of the most disciplined guys I've ever met in my entire life. Richie Loco, we've talked about everything from – our experience on uh, Insecure to uh, what it felt like to be on that set to our family life. Also, yeah. like, what it's like to get rejected on, on auditions and all of that. So any right. one of those topics, man, please take a stab at and and let, let the people know who you are, man. Oh, uh, man, can y'all hear me fine? I, oh, I, we can hear you yeah, perfectly, brother. Okay, cool, cool. Um, Yeah, man, well, I'm Richie Loco. Uh, my, my real name is Richard Neville, though, better known as Richie Loco on social media, I should say. That's better. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, man, I'm um, South Central LA, man, born and raised, LA native. Um, acting is always something I always wanted to do. And um, unfortunately, you know, being in South Central LA, you know, you do a little extracurricular activities and uh, <laughs> you got <laughs> you got to leave a, you got to leave a bad situation, man. So by you do that, you can go to school, you join the military. You feel me? So I joined the Navy, did that, got out and um, I was contracting overseas for the DOD, Department of Defense, making good money as a civilian, Afghanistan, Iraq. And then one day I just quit, man, and said, what you gonna go do? Go be an actor. Something I always wanted to do, you feel me? So, um, Wait, 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 hold on, man. I, I yeah. have to do this, please, if you will allow me, okay? Yeah. I, have a, I have a question for you, I have a question for Neil and for Tristan. I wanna start with you, Richie Loco, um, yeah. because you and uh, Tristan are both LA natives. And Tristan is couldn't be more of a nice guy as well from even seeing this interview and his demeanor. Uh, Richie, man, how for you coming from your background, seeing what you've seen, being what you've been around, how is it possible for you just to be so kind as opposed to being the product of what you saw? Um, you know what, man? I always tell people like I'm from South Central LA, man, but um, it wasn't a lot. It, there wasn't always just trauma and you know just turmoil and mm. we didn't smile in the hood we had like a lot of good <laughs> times in the hood, bro. The you know what i mean that's why i smile so much man south of the 10 we, we had good times bro it wasn't just like you know south central the movie or you know uh boys in the hood i mean you had that don't get yeah. me wrong you know if you made it through the night which i did they like damn bro you you're a survivor in a sense you know but and not uh, on my street not on my street, <laughs> <laughs> not on my street. but um but no, nah, man, I, um, I've always believed in like being kind and I'm just, I'm just, I'm about peace first and foremost. And I'm just like, man, if I can create peace around me, then I then in return create peace within my life. So I'm, you know, I'm cool with being nice to people and being humble about things, man. And not really trying to, you know, just stir the pot and shit, man. I'm easy going. You feel me? You feel me? I you see me? Yeah. your you favorite <laughs> grip. <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie. Yeah. I ain't even gonna lie. I'm low key mad. Because he uh, asked both of them, and I'm from the hood too, CT. Just to, you ain't gotta be from South Central to be from the hood. No. Nigga, there's hoods everywhere. This yeah, nigga just automatically no. just why? Just because I didn't say South Central, I didn't have a hard upbringing. <laughs> nigga, fuck you. You <laughs> ain't from Detroit. You you of all people should no, understand. That Ryan, it, you got a relationship with your Central. father. Don't do that. No, nigga, man. I don't want to hear your response. <laughs> nigga, go back to what got the week. Continue, Richie. Continue. This is why. <laughs> I wanted to ask Richie and I wanted to ask Neil and Tristan because one, I know that, you know, I know Ryan, I know to here, I know uh, Ryan. And now of course, Richie, I know Richie before he got in, it's like, I didn't get, I don't want the conversation to just be for us comedians. When we have right. these amazing actors, what I right. do want to know is Neil, what is David Boreanaz like? I've been fucking with him since Angel. You understand me? <laughs> Tell me. He much, uh, he actually like his character that, that he plays right now on um, Seal Team. He's a kidder. He's a joker. You know, he likes to have fun, man. Uh, he cool. He's been number one for a long time. So, you know, uh, he has a certain breadth and area of knowledge that you know, he's able to impart on the show and mm. other actors. Um, but we've all been, I've been doing this 26 years. He's been doing it like 30 something. 
Like, if they're gonna you let the people know your age, Neil, when you say that. Just let me know. <laughs> hey, man, I still look pretty Nig- young. The nigga looked 30, but he's I've been doing this 26 <laughs> years. <ago. laughs> My knee hurt a little bit. <laughs> yeah. He was a Disney kid. Look, my kids, so I was just, look, my kids, 22 and 20. I just, heard, my wife came in. She said, yes, sir, I had an altercation at the court. And I'm like, what? that's why y'all saw me leave. I'm like, huh? What? what? Where I got? Speaking of hood. <laughs> I was like, I'll go right. It, it was just like, he, took, he handled it real quick. And it wasn't anything, so whatever. But um, uh, yeah, man, you know, uh, he's cool, man. We all, you know, we one big dysfunctional family, you know. Um, <laughs> You know, being the one brother on the show, you know, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, they got questions, you know, but I'm, I'm half white too, so like, yeah, you know, hey, like, who are you talking to right now? You know, like, who, which, which part of me are you asking? You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you want to put so the white funny. perspective or the black perspective, or you want to make sure? Um, and listen, uh, I, cool. I, I feel cool. like people would get so much from us just being on a panel and us doing this live especially in LA since we all are in LA so whenever the world opens up I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you brothers right now would you guys be open to having a panel uh in in real time and just telling people about how to perfect their craft how to take control of their career and and how to I don't know what I'm doing yeah the funny part about that to hear is as far as far as acting goes I suck so whenever <laughs> I'm, I'm awful, right? Like I know y'all, like the people watching, I know y'all see me on shows, but there's a reason why a nigga only has like two, three lines. I am <laughs> awful, nigga. Like, like okay. so when I watch, when I watch, you know what I mean? When I watch Neil, you know, and I watch Tristan and I watch Ricky, you other guys, I right? when I watch Ricky. them three. You know what I mean? I, I go, hey, you know hey, what? Hey, you messed up your here, line bro. just now, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nigga, Ricky. Bro. That's hilarious. His name, his name is Richie. It's Richie. Hey, Richie. Hey, 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 don't feel bad, Ryan. I've been known to hear over three years. Kev, over three, almost four years. They still call me Ricky, bro. So I ain't, I ain't even hey, mad at you. Listen, call me Ricky. Ricky. Don't do that. I'm don't like, do that, Richie. No, Richie. Don't do that. Richie. They can check the tape on YouTube. Listen, listen, Richie. I know your name. If I said it wrong, it's because I'm drunk. It ain't because I don't know the name. I know the name. Yeah, I know the name. I would yeah. never call you Ricky intentionally, nigga. I know it's Richie. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change my name to Ricky, though. Shit. No, man. don't you do that. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. never. Uh, but I'm awful. So, and it was. Uh, it, that's humbling, though, to realize that like acting is really. Like, you can difficult. do this too, huh? Like you can do this too. I am yeah, awful. everybody like like just like everybody think they can do stand up. I get, like, everybody probably thinks they can do you know acting. Acting is really really difficult, and I'm really awful at it. So when I get rejected, when I got rejected initially, I realized. Thankfully for me, I was humble enough to realize, hey man, you don't get to be good at everything right mm. off the bat. That ain't how that ain't how things work. So like even when Tahir is talking about doing a panel, when them niggas start talking, I'm gonna go sit in the audience because, <laughs> <laughs> because I need notes. I'm I'm really bad. I haven't really been taking acting classes, but now that I've been getting into acting, I'm starting to realize how great some niggas are. Like I never watched Denzel Washington movies heavy, but now that I'm into acting, I'll watch it and be like, how in training day did this nigga have seven emotions at one time, how was he mad, <laughs> sad, scared, but threatening, and, and all at the same time at the, in that last right. scene? It's like once you start acting, you be like, "That is unfucking believable." <laughs> I'm awful! I am awful at this. Hey, here, I'll come if Tristan bring his dog. That's the only way I'll come. <laughs> bring Cornelius. You gonna sit right there on stage? You gonna Neil sweater on the dog? Hey, I'm with it. <laughs> real quick, real quick, Richie. Um, we only got twelve minutes left. Richie, please change your uh, your name to your cash app real quick. If you need me to do it, I can do it for you. Um, um but the Richie, right, I cash app is real. Ryan Davis Comedy. I've said <laughs> uh, this name many um, times. I'm pretty. I sure can change it for you, Richie. What is it? Yeah, just is this Richie Loco? Yeah. Okay. Um, before <laughs> we get out of here, yeah. man, I, I want to say. Uh, <laughs> Ryan, what you just said right there is so imperative because 
one of the best things that you can have in Hollywood, especially when you're pursuing the dream and entertainment is self-awareness. The fact that you are aware that you need to better yourself with acting skills and, and get a coach and get a teacher and, and, and take classes weekly lets me know that you're serious about any crap that you're about. Um, a lot, we feel a lot of ways, especially traditional comics and older comics about Instagram comedians who jump into the comedian lane and start doing that. But I'm sure actors feel a certain type of way too about comedians who jump in the acting lane and they <laughs> might have gone through certain schools or they might have done like X amount of years of, of training to perfect their craft. Um, I want Tristan and then Neil to kind of speak on how you guys feel about that when, when comedians get roles that you feel like maybe a thespian should have got. Or rappers. Oh, wait, wait, let me say this. Let me say this before you start. This episode may go long, guys. Uh, I'm not saying how long, but it may go a little long because you know I like to close out and let people give them a chance to tell you what's going on, what they got to <laughs> out to look for. But I also don't want to cheapen it by shortening people's responses or anything like that. So we might go to 9, 10, 9, 15, but I feel like this is imperative. Because I know we have people watching that want to be actors and want to be comedians. And I feel like you guys can really benefit from the testimonials of these people here. So with that being said, again, uh, Tristan, then Neil. Um, hey, they they killing you about your way you said pronounce it Tristan, by the way. Just letting you know. I know y'all can't see the comments. But I'm watching. Y'all know that. Y'all know that. You know what? Kiss my ass. Tristan, go ahead. <laughs> Well, I mean, I will say, like, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not tripping um, because about um, who gets what role. I feel like whoever gets the role was meant to get the role. They deserved it. They were the right person for the role. And if the product comes out and then we all see that they weren't right for the role or it didn't, it, something wasn't right, then now everybody knows. But like, I'm not going to get pissed. That uh, that Meek Mill got a role in a movie that I auditioned for, or something like that. For example, um, and the reason why I said that specifically is because I went to Sundance this year and I saw this film, and I can't remember the Humble name. Humble flex the in the Sundance. Go ahead, man. <laughs> I ain't never been. I'm rich now, though. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, oh, the name of the film. The name of the film was called Charm City Kings, yeah. and it was the best film at Sundance and it had these young black kids in it and everybody was dope and Meek Mill fucking killed it. He hmm. killed the role in the movie. I was like, I did not know he had it in him. The movie was so good and I'm so upset that COVID happened because now the world's not going to be able to see it in movie theaters. Mm. It, it went to a streaming service that's going to be coming out soon, but the movie is so damn good and I'm going to mm. be promoting the fuck out of it and I had shit to do with the movie. So like, yeah. I'm not mad I'm not mad if like a comedian or a, a rap star or someone popular um, who's not a traditional actor gets a role that like, I'm like, man, I should have been in it. If they're good, they're good. Like it's right. meant for them. It's right. not meant for me. What's meant for me is meant for me. And that's something Neil told me as well. It's like, I can't be going in a room for an audition thinking like, okay, yeah, this is for me. This, mm. this role is for me because it's for me and I won. It's like, no. I will prepare as much as I can for this role. I will mm -hmm. do my homework. I will do everything that I'm supposed to do. Don't that lie on me. How to don't do. lie. I ain't tell you that sounding like sensei over here. Don't, don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't give me too much credit. You Neil, don't have Neil, to play the sense of self. I'm not that dude. <laughs> okay, hold on. Because, Neil, you, you told me this, and I remember the night I was driving my PT Cruiser, my 2006 PT Cruiser, <laughs> when it broke down. My car broke the fuck down and overheated and I had to call a tow truck and we were on the phone the whole time. I don't know. I can't remember if I told you that, but like we were on the phone the whole time when you told me this, Neil. And it's like, what is for us will be for us. And it's like, we, we get that audition. We're excited about it. We go in a room, we do the best that we can. And then we let that shit go. What will be, will be. What we did in the room stays in a room. What happened before we got in the room stays out of the room. Whatever the bullshit is happening, it stays out of the room. But when you're in the room, you're in the scene, and you're in the moment, you do whatever you did, and then like, that's it. It's like you're performing a stage play. It's like, that's your stage. It's like, and it's one time only. So I'm not tripping. 
Hey, can I be y'all friends, man? Y'all seem like y'all friends in real life. I want to hang out with y'all, man, when the world <laughs> open back up. Nah. I got to be careful what I be downloading into my homies, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I want to hang out with your 35 year old because nigga, you do not look that old. <laughs> That's right. 35, he got into a fight on the he just got into a fight. That's why I muted myself. Like 35, <laughs> how old are you? So me, me, and Neil, me and Neil has had conversation about kids. Mine is five and three. I thought his was near my age. Near the <laughs> ages of my kids. No, his, his kids are near the age. But I'm sitting oh, here man. like, oh, I why are that. we talking about children? They, we all had the same experience. <laughs> <laughs> my baby's 37. And my oldest is fifty one. <laughs> I, I saw that woman, and I knew I knew everything about her. Once the minute I saw her, she was a woman in my dreams, and I was gonna marry her and we were gonna make babies. Wow! Uh, I got started. We got started early. We didn't mean to get started early, but we did. Then nobody come. Then nobody come here to cry, Cash. <laughs> 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 hey, that's a T-shirt, bro. I didn't, we didn't come here to cry, cuz. We didn't come here to cry, Cash. Yeah. We didn't come here to cry, cuz. Yeah. <laughs> we to cry, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> that's a T-shirt, nigga. Nah, <laughs> nah she she dope. I've been as long as I've been acting, I've been well. Yeah, as long as I've been acting, I've been in my life since too. Um, that's dope, man. Seriously, that's dope. And, uh, real, I appreciate you know what I'm saying. Um, but. But uh, to, to what Tristan was saying, um, no, I get pissed off when a motherfucker get a job over me and an actor, rapper, you know, singer. <laughs> I, I, get, I get mad because <laughs> I get you automatically mad. got a little step above me for your other success. Go uh, over there, make your money, man. What you doing? Go over here with my stuff. I'm, mm. just, I'm a day player. Um, <laughs> I'm a day player. I'm, 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 <laughs> and, and, so, so what I was going to say, actually, is that you go through levels of uh, as an act in any profession, especially as an entertainer, you go through levels and ebbs and flows, peaks and valleys, ups and downs of how you feel about the game, um, how you feel about your art, how you feel about your craft, how you feel about uh, those audition rooms. And you go through like, you know, in, in the span of a, of a career, you go through being like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be the guy to just know I'm going to get it, I'm going to claim it, I'm going to claim it. And then you go through another period of like, well, you know, what? I'm just like the chips fall with it. And you, know, mm. you evolve over time, you find out what works for you. I told Tristan what worked for me. And what's worked for a lot of the homies around me. My cousin, uh, Tori Killer, is another actor, and he's a little bit before, he's just a little bit older than me. And, you know, the, th the stuff that he would learn, he would heavily impart on me. But, you know, mostly, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like I told Tristan, like he's saying, what's for you is for you. And, and I, my, I, I, I don't have to take from your shine to get my shine on, and, and vice versa. Um, my shine is my shine, and, and, and it will happen the way it's supposed to happen, as long as I'm diligent about it, as long as I put in all the work. And like real work, not that like, oh man, I'm doing the work, I'm doing the work, and dude's just sitting right. on the phone. Right. Right. I mean, you gotta be constantly reading, studying. Nobody, we're all business owners, like you said, and nobody's gonna tell you when to get up, when to, you know, uh, uh, what to study, what to uh, work on. You know, you just, you just, it, it, it's part of you, it's part of your journey. So I, I do get upset. I mean, I used to get upset because I say, why do I have to watch a rapper learn to act on a show? Mm -hmm when there was a great young actor who all he wants to do is act. Like I could have watched him just be dope. Um, and that's because that dude went and was dope on something else. Mm -hmm. That's the second half of it. Like I didn't know, you know, and, and early on in my career, I was like, Yo, it's just, you already got your fan base and you coming up in the end. Like, honestly, at, at the time, so I was in an interesting space because there wasn't a lot of cats look like me. That, you know, there was, some, there was a couple mixed dudes, but it wasn't like, not popular and like my, my homeboys would hit me up all the time it's like man you know how many you know you know how many break and break down how many african americans do you see how many how many black people do you see we we have disadvantage and i'm like how many mixed people do you see jack jack, jack. he's blessed jack <laughs> <laughs> doesn't exist. don't happen don't let my name jack hey, <laughs> jump. we did exist but look but at here sucker it, how many <laughs> mixed people do you see out here drive turkey. My baby is 42. <laughs> they think I'm Spanish. I mean, they won't even let me be black. Man. Um, um, hey, he was Spanish. Funny. He was Spanish in, uh, in, uh, <laughs> and what's the fuck? That's uh, the, the zombie show. What the fuck oh, is oh, it? Uh, oh, yeah. The Walking Dead. Walking Dead. This nigga was Spanish. I've been Spanish. Ryan, <laughs> all it took was a Google search for you to find <laughs> me. Who is the callback, lady? I'm drunk. <laughs> I knew it already. <laughs> I knew it already. I'm drunk. What's your excuse? Uh, You're right. What's your excuse, so Clayton? You're lazy. <laughs> I 
I had to be Spanish for so long that I would walk into the room and all the real Puerto Ricans and Boricuas and, and, and Dominicans and, and, and Mexicans would be like, what are you even doing here, man? Like they were mad, on, bro. Like, on, Why are you here? And I was like, my great grandma, my great 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 grandma was was knew a Spanish person, you know. Mm. Um, <laughs> you know, no, that's like in there. But like a lot of people don't even really know my full mix. Nigga, my but son anyway, burritos. <laughs> <laughs> but, what, but what I was saying was like, and, and at that time because it was so difficult, um, you know, black people. We had to, we didn't compete against all other actors. First of all, there wasn't that many roles, and then the roles that there were, you weren't competing against just another actor. You were competing against a rapper, a, a singer, a dancer. You were competing against a com competing against a comedian, and most of these cats were way more famous than you. Mm -hmm. White people weren't dealing with this at the time. Like when I first started, out, like when, you know, 10, 15 years into it, they, they weren't mm -hmm. dealing with you know having to go up against all of the other entertainers, including actors. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? For these very few roles, you got this many roles and you got this many people, you know, this mm -hmm. many people. So, um, but then I had to learn that, you know, that I'm making this about someone else other than myself. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the responsibility lands on me, it rests on me. Mm -hmm. I go in, I'm as dope as possible in that room, and then I let it go. And the hardest thing I ever had to do was learn to let it go because I had kids, I had a wife, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I had to support them, and I ain't have no square job ever. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I had, you know, since I was 17. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was like, so, so it was like a forced kind of learning, you know, a forced, a forced process. But, um, I want, I want to ask one more question to the actors uh, before we get out of here. Um, and Neil, I, I, I completely agree with you, what you said and also what Trisha said. When it's for you, it's for you. Like nobody can take a role for you that was meant for you. If God mm -hmm. said it was so, it's going to happen. Uh, I fully believe that wholeheartedly, and and I and I, I accept that and adapt it to everything that I go out for in my life. So um, when it comes to rappers and and dancers and singers and stuff like that, you guys have given your opinion. But what about when it comes to like British actors getting roles like um, like a John Bodega, um, in David Ayelowo? Uh, you said what? John Bodega. Oh, I thought you were looking for John Boyega <laughs> and or David yeah, yeah. Ayelowa. I didn't know who you were. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm here to help, babe. Exactly what I said. I'm here to help, babe. I'm just here to help. So I, uh, I was on um I was on Instagram <laughs> at the thing today where they announced that they're basically coming out with a TikTok. So you guys will start seeing this in a couple of days from the beta testers who are a lot of black creators. And I was on this conference. This conference virtual meeting today. I got, I got, and that. um, uh -huh. that's going to come out. And for some reason, they had John Boyega there, and it made me think about that. Like, you think about acting, and you think about all the people who are here, and a lot of big roles are going to people who are from the UK. Uh, how is do you guys apply that same type of John race? Boyega? <laughs> If you give me six no, times no. to say his name, I'm gonna say it wrong five times. You understand? John me? Bodega, <laughs> bro. <laughs> you make the best deli sandwiches in New York. I'm sorry, go ahead, Neil Tristan. How do you guys feel about <laughs> Neil, British uh, actors? Neil, Neil then Tristan. <laughs> okay, um, uh, uh, I, to your point, you know, it's, it is an easier thing to be, especially when they're playing like American people, right? Um, it is a thing to be like, oh man, we know. But do you know how hard they work over there in Europe? Mm, like, like, man. like when they on their craft, they on their craft. Most of them went to school for it. Like, and, mm -hmm. and like always in theater doing stuff mm -hmm. that like, we're close to Hollywood. So we have this idea, this perspective of like movies, you know, they first yeah. day most of the time is theater, just straight theater. I want right. to be live part of the crowd. I want to learn, I want to learn. They deep with theirs. We are too. We have very uh, solid actors that put in a lot, a lot of hard work, um, but they do too. So they deserve the right to compete. And if they went out, they just went out. That's just what it is. You know, you take the L and move on. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I, I, I don't see, I, I just don't see like the, the problem. I, you've seen all very great, all these great performances from them because that's, have you ever watched that television? 
I mean, mm-hmm. you believe everything. You can yeah, watch yeah. a lot of right, American right. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You, know, you don't believe nothing. You know, because we got a lot of it. Mm-hmm. They stuff. Have you watched some Korean shows? I mean, I'd I be stuck in there. I'm like, yo, I believe. I don't even know what they're saying. And I believe every bit of it. Right, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So they put a lot of work in without the money. Because we make way more money than them. We got, the mm-hmm. money, we got all that stuff. And they're doing a lot more for less a lot mm-hmm. of time. So, you know, I think that gives them more than the right to, to, to compete against us. And all I do is just say, just be better over here. Word. Mm. Look, go, hey, Brian, what are you talking about, buddy? Yeah, my, my only issue is, like, look, I love British actors. They're what's great. up, Austin? Got to say what's up to your background since he walked hey, in. Hey, he's trying to sneak by yeah. without well, being mentioned. Like and then you said so. I was like, yeah, yeah, just come through. Ain't nobody going to say nothing. Like, and sure enough, CT's like, <laughs> what up, Austin? <laughs> Nigga was trying to sneak through. Like, he got hungry. How long is this show? Snack. I need a snack. Nigga yeah. <laughs> wanted to eat some John Boy Bodega sandwich. Yo, know, so wow. my issue, my only issue is when they play our heroes. Like being black yeah. in America is is very important to us. You know what I mean? Because we've been through what we've been through. We go through what we go through. And those stories mean a lot to us, you know, our heroes. If somebody British played Jackie Robinson or James Brown or, you know, something like that, it, would, it wouldn't it would sit well with me, man. It just doesn't, right. you know what I mean? Like, well, because we're not playing there. I mean, we wouldn't, they wouldn't. Yeah, we don't we play their heroes. Dope, dope. Yeah. Dudes, right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that. That time, but that's because we don't have it. I, I tell people all the time, it's like, why do British people, why are they able to sound like Americans all the time? And like Americans a lot of time, when we try to sound like British people, we Be just trash. sound That's because they listen <laughs> to our TV. They, they watch our TV all the time. They listen to American voices all the time. Yeah. How much British television do any of y'all, I mean, like, do we, huh. they really watch? Like, I watch like, Dirk how, Honestly, how would y'all feel if they did the outcast story and both them niggas was British? How would you feel? <laughs> how would you feel? I'd be hurt, bro. Uh, yeah, I don't care how great hurt. of a job <laughs> they'll do. It's me off. Nigga has a nigga from South what? who grew yeah, up and grew up and grew up. Niggas all oh, naked out of burn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Me It'll and you and like your mom, too. Like, mom. Like, what? Yeah. My yeah. mom? mom. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck Baghdad. We had to drop bombs over Hollywood. Fuck that. Like, yeah, yeah, that wasn't plot at all. I'm sorry. Yeah, but I mean, it's up to us to be dope enough to like make them not an afterthought. You know, you got to be like dope yeah. and authentic. But their ear is so different. But, but I think I've been on tour in the uh, UK a few times too. And there's so many different types of people. Humble flex all over the world. International. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> that was before I was rich. But listen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, but listen, man, when you're there, you see white guys do Jamaican accents because there's so many different types of people. Like, I'm from the South. I didn't really grow up around Jamaicans. But again, if you're in New York, you hear that. But going to London and watching them code switch, as we call it, and to be able to do, like, my man, uh, Damson Idris uh, from Snowfall, bro, and to do a West Coast accent, nigga, thoroughly impressed. <laughs> thoroughly impressed. So it's kind of dope to see all that and see the transition. Nigga. Listen, listen, I want to um, get your take on them real quick. Um, Who? <clears throat> Richie. To, to oh, um, um, honestly, man. <laughs> Richie. I, 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 no, 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 not Richie. Tristan, Tristan, Tristan. Oh, okay. So you over here Tristan eating while you're supposed to be hosting. That's your Tristan problem to hear. <laughs> you always playing. You run up and down the street, always playing. You say you had a gun when you seen them. <laughs> and they won't fall in the hood to play like that. <laughs> Register what he's doing. He's just letting it happen. You know what I mean? Solid ass exit. <laughs> Quick hit, um, mate. Um, I'm um, to answer the question. Like that shit is so tight to me. Like because I love I love voices. Like for example, what I do with Doug Yoda is like I listen. Like I've always I used to get in trouble all the time for imitating my uncles. Like I got an uncle Craig, and he kind of sound like this. So sometimes <laughs> I be doing that in front of my family and be like, what? What would you say? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so like <laughs> I've always done this. I've always just like had an ear or like uh imitated folks and shit like that. So when I see British actors or when I see a performance and then I look them up because that's what I do, and then I see they're from <laughs> they're from England, I'm like, that shit is tight. Like did y'all know this nigga Delroy Lindo is British? 
Yeah, I didn't know that. You just Wait, told he is? Me. Yeah, you just let me know that. I just now? Been. Wow. Like today? Legendary. This yeah, I didn't Del I didn't know Del Idris Del was forever until he did the movie where they were robbing shit and he played a British black Take dude. Us. And I was like, Take damn, this is the takers. And he was like, I was like, even he could he could even do a British accent. I was so amazed. <laughs> and everybody was like, nigga, that's his voice. This is the one time he's not acting. This is the one. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's funny <laughs> but like that shit is so tight to me like i wish like low-key i wish i grew up in london so i can go right. to one of those schools and just study the craft the way that the folks in london study i know you, but there's there's a study there's a study there's a school from london that's over here i forget what it's called i think it's idsa or some identity school or something like that um they're over here from from london and i'm like mm. You know, next time when COVID's not happening, I might just go over, slide over to that school and learn what the fuck they teaching because like that shit is so amazing to me. It's like, I would love to um, use like my ability to like change my voice and shit mm. and just use that with the character role. Cause I've done that with baby voice Darius and I've done that with, with, uh, with Thug Yoda. Um, like bigger is the first time where I just get to use like my own voice and just be like, um a version of myself um but like that shit is so amazing so like i'm never mad when i see like what this nigga's british too it's like wow that nigga's british too i think when that came from when you talked earlier to hear about the access not to over jump you uh rich but when we look at the comedians who started on social media and get a chance to have that fan base. I think a lot of the older comedians were angry because they're like, yo, it's just what you said earlier, Neil, where you're like, yo, you know what I'm saying? You have this fan base already. I have been working so hard to get to that point. Like for me, I wish, I almost wish I would have done social media before I started stand up 15 years ago, because if I would have just focused on getting the crowd then who knows what would have happened compared to the comedians who told me, yeah, if you just get really, really funny and get an hour worth of material, <laughs> right. you'll get a chance to headline everywhere. Well, when we it didn't know. Like that. We didn't we know, didn't but know. the good part is you picked up, you you adjusted. And for all of us that's on this uh, Zoom right now, we all have to learn how to adapt to mm. the world we live in, mm-hmm. now, especially comedians. Because uh, I heard this comedian say, dudes didn't want to do his online show, but they want to do his podcast. And they're like, hey, it's the same thing. Like, <laughs> nobody. <laughs> but you only have a preference for one, you know what I'm saying? So we all have yeah. to adapt. And I'm I was the last generation of watching cats do a late night performance and they life mm. change. I did I was the last one. When I did last comic standing, they started adding reality stuff and it got weird. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in my head, me being the finals on last comic standing, I'm like, oh my life about to change, but mm-hmm. nothing really happened because and I did Arsenio too, so it just it got different. But then I could have caught on to social media when it first popped, but I was still mm-hmm. like I'm a purist as yeah, far yeah, as yeah. comedy. And I was like, yeah, I'll just, man, I'm good. But then later on, I was like, yeah, I'll get left behind if I don't keep up. You know Facts. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Caught on, yeah. Uh, Ryan and and uh, Clayton. Well, shout out to my OGs, because they didn't lie to me like they lied to Clayton. They, uh, <laughs> my OG was like, my OG was like, hey, you want to work in this world? Learn how to put asses in seats. Mm. And right now, the internet is how you put asses in seats. Yeah, you adapt. And, That's uh, good like, yeah. I was like, let me figure this social media shit out. Let me tell y'all a secret. Most people don't even know this. Hate social media. Can't stand it. Wish I didn't have to do it ever. Every day that I get on, it's the worst day of my goddamn life. But <laughs> it's <laughs> but it's the yeah, tool. Your sales pitch I on that do. and acting is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a terrible I'm actor. I hate social media, but my life is popping. <laughs> yeah. Social media no. made, made my life what it is today, and I thank all my friends fans and I will continue to do the things that they love but I hate it so do understand that I'm doing it for y'all like hey, real quick, no- but, to, hey, but to but to jump in on that like it's um social media definitely even for like stand-up and acting like I um like I said I always wanted to be an actor and um for me I was staying like five hours away and shit from L- not five hours I was staying um in Temecula <laughs> like an hour and a half from LA that's and so shit far. you feel me that's five hours nigga <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. I think it's like nice to drive to bullshit ass audition. That'd take like five hours sometimes, right? Coming to LA for five minute audition. But anyhow, social media, you know, if it weren't for Twitter, you know, I wouldn't have been on Insecure if I'm being honest. You know what I'm mm. saying? Because cast directors went out, like, we looking for somebody to come on Insecure. And 
mm-hmm. he just so happened to see my shit. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. It all started me picking up a phone, like making my own sketches by myself. My wife just come home in the middle of the day like, you a weirdo, what are you doing? Like, what? I'm talking to myself, I'm doing this shit. You know what I mean? She's like, you weird as hell for this. And I'm like, look where it got it. So like, I know like, not only have I been on television, my kids too. So like, damn, like, you know, and that's the power of social media. So I think a lot of, like Ron was saying, a lot of people, they don't want to conform to that. They're like, I'm a purist. But at the end of the day, it's like, what's, what's the now? It's not the way, like the internet is the now. And you have to be there. You know what I mean? Like you have to, you know? And it's, Ain't it's, no it's, a lot of people don't hear that. No more. Nah, it ain't. Hey, real niggas get on stage. Real, like, nah, real niggas <laughs> <broke. laughs> Hey, hey, I, I, I yeah. wanted to say something um, about the, you know, like, cause, cause, you know, just to back when we were talking about like what's for you and what I was saying was for you, you know, can't nobody keep from you. You know what I'm saying? You, you're going to get what you're yeah. supposed to get. Insecure and this other show, Dirt Gently, that I that I did, I auditioned to be the leads in those. I, I, I auditioned to be Jay. Mm. Ah. I tested too. to be Jay. So, mm. L- Lawrence. L- uh, yes, yeah, to be Jay's character, Lawrence. I tested for Lawrence uh, along with like six other cats who all ended up on the show. Mm. But tested for Lawrence, didn't get it, just knew I was, they were loving me, Prince. Everybody was loving me, love me. Oh. <laughs> and, 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 and I did the show Dirk Gently. I, I tested to be the lead character in that. And then like, I did, um, when they were doing the deal, they, 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 they said no to Insecure. They were like, ah, no, you don't got it, sorry. But if we go to series, you know, who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever. And then I, I, I started to test for Dirk Gently. And as I was getting the deal, they called me and they were like, hey, yeah, um, they're, 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 they're pausing your deal and putting an offer to someone else. I said, who is this someone else? Says, um, Elijah Wood. I was like, well, okay, then I'm done. <laughs> Because if you put a lot of wood, my shoulder's too big. You're not, you're not going to cast me. Or, <laughs> my shoulder's too big. You my shoulder. do those, those two things. <laughs> okay, they don't, you don't, you want, you either want Elijah Wood or you want this guy. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, it went to Elijah Wood. And then I went through this whole pilot season, man, and I, I tested nine more times, got nothing. And then at the very end, they called me and they said, hey, Dirk Gently wants to see you for another role. And I was like, cool. Well, cast me because you've seen me already. I, mm-hmm. You know, I've been there <laughs> times. It was like, yeah, but um, they want to actually see you. And I said, okay, you know what? I'm gonna bite the bullet. You know, even though you already see me, I'm gonna come in. They was like tomorrow, and I'm mm-hmm. like, what? Huh? <laughs> what? Uh, y'all ain't gonna give me a lead in or nothing? I was like, okay, you know what? Yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. What is it? Boom. They said, okay, I got it. I said, I'm gonna come in the suit all the way over the Marina Del Way to the West Side. I'm gonna crush it. Then I said, I told my manager, I said, you know, this is probably the night that all the old stuff that didn't cast me gonna call me for. He was like, yeah, that's funny. Hung, hang up. That was like five o'clock. <laughs> Eight o'clock. They called me. Hey, uh, remember what you had said? Well, insecure call. Wow. Also, and they want to audition you for another role. <laughs> like, well, they seen me and were t- and t- <laughs> this role. So why did they need to for the other thing? And then I was like, you know what? I'll do that too. When is it? Uh, tomorrow, same day. So, can you do both those? Is that possible? Oh, same like, day. Jeez. Why did y'all, I wanted to go, I was like, Prentice, why would y'all do that to me? Like, this is messed up. <laughs> and then, you know what? God was on my spirit. He's like, you know what? I'll do them both. Mm. How, how much time I got in between the two? 45 minutes. Jeez. That's just a driving so part. That's traffic, too? That's traffic? <laughs> <laughs> in the traffic? Oh, the world, definitely the world, pre-pandemic. It was, it was the world, close to each other. But it was all on the west side. And I, you know, I only go there to audition, I don't, you know. So, so I went there, same suit. I was like, well, I can't change because I only got 45 minutes. That's to get there, park at HBO and all that stuff. I said, I can only, uh, at Sony, uh, I can only, uh, I, I'll wear the same suit. So I'm, and I was the one dude in the Insecure Audition with a suit, by the way. Hey. Um, uh, because I wore a suit to play a detective on the other one. And long story short, short story long, even after like getting told no by them and then having to come back in after being like at the top, you know, the, the, the regular, and then having to come back in and basically start all over again, I went to both auditions and I booked both on the same day. Mm. So look at God. What? Look at God. <laughs> what he got for you? you know what like, I, I, that was that I, was I, Neil's I, way of telling us that he don't need as much time to get shit as we do. That was pretty much <laughs> all. <laughs> 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 it was like y'all can have all week. 
but if I find out the day of, it's mine. Nigga. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> That that just that just proved why he didn't have his cash up the cash app up. The whole <laughs> time. <laughs> the whole time. Listen, <laughs> it's nine twenty right now. No, nah, don't do that, Ken. Um, don't do it, man. No, nah, man. Close it out, man. We're we having a great go. vibe. We having a great. Know, everybody's know, enjoying listen, it. Listen, 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 hey, listen, fuck listen. your rules, nigga. No, I'm, I'm, so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was the alcohol, nigga. That had nothing to do with you. You gotta, you gotta leave them. Y'all, y'all are actors and comedians. You know, you leave them wanting more before they get tired of you. Okay. Uh, y'all know, y'all know the rules. Okay. Yeah. These you are know, the rules. Like, Clean, Clayton, fix your goddamn face. I'm sick of your shit already. <laughs> Who the fuck are you talking to, T? I'm talking to you. You're talking to me like you are a single mother right now. <laughs> fix fix your, your face. face. Oh, that's I love so how funny. y'all address like how you had to go on stage and when it's you in pain and all that stuff, but you ain't address a, like a 50, 60 million dollar production when like something bad happened to you and you got to go on there and they say, say the lines. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you know that. what, Neil? You know what, Neil? Here's the thing. It's because that we are we're guests in your world. <laughs> yeah, so right. I can't, I, I can't speak to Hold that on, the way that you can, but I can always open the door and open the floor for you to speak to that. But I, I don't want to speak to that because I'm I'm literally a guest in your world. Like I I guest star in roles. I've never had a lead role. I've never been a regular. I've been a, a series regular, but. Two suit two two episodes like that's not even really regular for real. If you would like to speak on that, you are. Because I re- I remember I remember the last episode of uh series three ep- uh yeah series three. You we were at the the Hollywood Memorial Cemetery, and oh. it was your anniversary, and you had something planned special for your wife. Jeez. And you had to go, and you were literally like, "Where well, you're gonna get this shot finished by this time, or I'm fucking leaving." And that's it. And you were a square fucking Hold star on. on the show, so speak on it. My my son was graduating high school that night. Uh, my I had flown all my family into town, mm. and I was I ran over. <laughs> I wait a second, wait a second. Neil, let let us who don't know what that's like just breathe on that. You flew your whole family <laughs> in the tent. Bless See? you. I didn't say I felt like you. Yeah, no, nah, it's too late. Hair. Just just <laughs> add, had to sit in that. Man, my kids ain't even been to my house, man. That's that's Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> and the, that, well, wait, the, that's wow. The whole time, the whole time somewhere Ryan, over there. there. <laughs> the whole time Ryan is sitting there like that's I, nothing. I flew my whole I high school them the in. Like, <laughs> yeah. Look at Ryan. Ryan's like, this is family. I had my whole high school come through. That's crazy. <laughs> building as well. <laughs> no, I flew them. I flew them in because it was a secret. It, I flew them. I, I we did it. The onus was like under my son. Like he was graduating, so we flew all the family in. So it made it look like oh, they want to see him. But really, what we, my son and I were doing, we had planned this thing over like fifteen years. My wife and I had never um, had a wedding. Uh, we were far too broke. We had no money when we got married. Um, and she always wanted a, 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 a wedding. And I told her, I said, you want a house or you want a wedding? And you can't have both. So to pick your poison. And uh, I said, we're not getting married. We're not having another wedding because all your brothers and sisters and all that stuff had big weddings and they all divorced. We had a little tight, we, we had nothing. Courthouse and we still together for 20 some years. But secretly, I was planning a reproposal to her to do in front of her family, to do in front of all these people. I had we ain't come here to crack ass. I you trying to come on, cuz how do we get we here? How do we get here, cuz? God. Damn. I, was, I was just yeah, waiting. Yeah. I, I, I was trying to I was trying to come up with the I'm all sweating. Jesus. <laughs> I was trying to develop the relationships Ooh. between like uh Bill Wang and all these the things that she loved and all the people that she loved. So that I could, you know, I, I was trying to be as successful as I can to to, gar- to get those relationships so that I could give her the wedding of her dreams. Now I finally was able to do that. And it just so all of it happened in happened on the day that we had the film. And it was Regina. Remember Regina King was uh was directing the episode. Fine as hell. Regina King is fine as hell. I mean, a little oh, tiny something. <laughs> just, um uh but 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 and she knew about it. 
Did you have so to rub your hands together when you said that? Little tiny something. <laughs> little, little tiny something. <laughs> little tiny something. Anyway, <laughs> my wife, right? Whatever it was. Dear Wayne, <laughs> my baby boy. 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 My baby I had to shoot that scene and then get dressed to go to the graduations, my son's graduation, and then take my wife to the uh, to the to the restaurant where we were having a celebration for Ethan with all these people and uh, and then the singers and stuff came up. I had to sneak off into the bathroom to get into my tux, uh, which they had hung up there. They had, it was a whole big huge setup. I could have done it without like you know like much smarter people than myself, um, but. It was just all of these things that I had to do and set up and make sure everybody was in their right place and all that stuff uh, and, and still nail that scene, um, which I, I thank you to hear because like you, you helped me through it. It was nice and cool and calm and you were, you know, you were snapping and you know, was cracking jokes and stuff. It was all good, but I needed, I, you know, I had to break out. It was, I, I was stressed. I, I had a panic attack on the way to like asking her, like, cause I was freaking out. Cause I, you know, I didn't know, maybe, maybe she'd be like, you know what? Nah, I'm straight. Mm. <laughs> like what 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 it would have been really awkward that after all these years she'd been like you know what this is my chance to get out i'm done i was actually gonna break <laughs> up with you tonight but yeah, uh... gonna... <laughs> <laughs> what do you do this since time? he graduated I I <laughs> hey, since he graduated now's the perfect time to tell you uh, uh-huh. hey, but Neil, i'm man. actually tripping off of I have to fly out that night because me, Kev, and Tony have a show that weekend. So I'm like, I gotta get out of here. My flight. Big flex performing all over the world with your friends. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> but listen, hey, hey, I still don't appreciate y'all calling your tour the real comedians of social media, nigga. I'm a real comedian too. These niggas slap all of us in the face. With that shit. Real here's the thing, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Here's the thing. You know for a fact that wasn't towards you. It with Neil's hand. I know. I know. I just had to. Hey, so to here, you left him off the flyer and the tour? Is that what you said? <laughs> it wasn't my Nick tour. Flex, edit me. Ryan, it wasn't my tour. Too. <laughs> I do want to say, here's the thing. When we started that, Ryan Davis was already touring alone. He was touring the world before we even started our tour. That's number one. I wasn't going to say that. I'm just saying the name of the tour. <laughs> Here's the was, thing. Uh, I named mine funnier in person. You Why could couldn't y'all do up. that? Something of that nature. Oh, it. It. <laughs> but it definitely was a flex to some niggas' faces. I yeah. won't say their names unless you pay me. If I get $100 <laughs> in the next... Five minutes. I'll oh, say I'm going to send something to you. I'm going to bang oh, your line after this is over. Right I'm going to send now. something to you. Don't worry about hey, well, it. Send it right just, now. Just drop, just drop one name. It's me. Drop one name. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, okay. I get $100 okay, and I'll, I'll say hey. the names in the next five minutes. Uh-huh. Otherwise, I want to say this, though, because uh, to hear about the kick us off, Neil, man, what you bring to that show as the character, you know what I mean? Chad, real niggas need that. There's no character like that on TV, you know, there's not a lot of black men on TV, period, but to, you know, have that perspective of a dude that's not a pushover when it comes to women or whatever, it just seems like, you know, I'm glad you got that instead of Lawrence, you know what I mean? Um, (laughs) Because of what you brought to it, you know, we all know you didn't get Lawrence because you're short, but either way, like it's just because <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> that's a backhanded like six, compliment. Yeah, I'm like, but I'm glad. Four. But I'm so glad you got Chad because I'm telling you, and it's 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 important. Like your character and Kelly's character, you know what I mean, is the most important to the show to me because it keeps me invested. You know what I mean? Drama is cool, but drama isn't what keeps me invested in a show. It's right. funny. And yeah. what you and Natasha do on that show, man, I, I tell you, I, I appreciate y'all. Right. Just Absolutely. Fan yeah, for of sure, the show, for sure. man, I, I love what y'all do. Man, you too, Tristan. But I wish they had you. Sorry. I wish he still lived in the building so he could see you more. I know, right. <laughs> I was to get, to get, like, I wanted, I wanted Chad running the Tristan. So bad, nigga. So and the run into Natasha's character. I was like, oh my god, it's like it would be great. Um, Yeah. uh, Shout out to me being one of the only few cats on that show that's never naked. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to Issa like, seeing this and next season, that's your ass, oh, literally. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they're going to call him Cheek Meat McGee on the next one after they win this Emmy. <laughs> win this Emmy. <laughs> Cheek Meat McGee. And they feel like they got my nigga Richie girls, taking like, care of a baby that ain't his and the girl that no, ran off. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's the other, that's that's other that's brother. That's my brother. Oh, that's your brother that ain't got. Oh, that is my other brother. If you like, nah, I wouldn't even do no shit like that. Even if I was active. <laughs> and Neil, after this Emmy is coming, bro. After this Emmy, it is coming, nigga. Cheek me, begin. Cheek. Uh, Let's get these get stretch marks too. I love that they don't never show your wife. By the way, that's that. I love that that they never show who she is. It's She's a perfect. rumor. It's beautiful. I mean, yeah. so like people, like girls, always get on me about chat. They're like, "He's such a hoe. He's such a this." I say, "Have you ever seen him naked? Have you ever seen him shirtless? Have you ever seen him fucking around with some girls?" And right. they're like, "Yeah." Well, well, he was, hold on, hold on. He had the strippers. Like, yeah, what did he do with the strippers? Did he even touch the strippers or did they try to touch him? And did they cut before that happened? And they're like, Go with the facts, pissing people off. Yeah. Pissing people off. Making pissing them people off with the facts. Like, they don't like that. That's acting, see? Make them feel he, like it. But he's yeah. a good nigga. He a good nigga to me. Hey, Neil got an entanglement <laughs> spirit. <laughs> Neil got an entanglement spirit. Is what it is. Before we before we close out, I wanted to make space to make sure Tristan didn't want to add anything to what uh, Neil had said about being having to be able to perform and spit those lines, even though you might be going mm. through something, you might be dealing with something. Um, I just wanted to make way, make a little space for you. Yo, the um, I will say this: the very first, the very first scene that I filmed for Insecure, Thug Yoda's debut. I remember that I was, I was taken aback because one, it was a day before my thirtieth birthday, and mm. I remember I told myself when I was back working at Target as a fucking guest service team leader, <clears throat> making twelve dollars an hour. I Big I told flex myself, team leader. <laughs> hey Clayton, as he pushes glasses up, I was uh, working at Target. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, listen, listen, guys, twelve bucks an hour, team leader. <laughs> Would you like a Target red card? Ouch. Would you like a Target red card with your purchase? I used to work there too, bro. You can save ten percent on all your purchases. Hey, listen, yes. guys. So what? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> like I told myself because I've I've always I've always been a performer. I'm not gonna get into it because we ain't got that much time. I've always been a performer. And so when I was there, I would told myself yeah, no. like, by the time I'm 30, I want to be professionally acting. I didn't know how that shit was gonna happen. And so like, I was, I'm on set, I've got the fucking black tank top on. I don't say that other word. Uh, I got the black tank top on and shit. And I'm just there with my, my pretend daughter. And it's a day before my 30th birthday. And I'm like, fuck. Oh. This was for me. And I'm just thinking about this. I'm supposed to be in fucking character as Thug Yoda as somebody who's supposed to be like talking about his, his baby mama and shit. And I remember I did the scene the first time and then like Issa came over and she was like, hey, um, and we're friends. We went to high school together and shit. And I was, I did Awkward Black Girl and we're friends. She came over and she was like, hey, you're a little, you know, you seem a little um, stiff. Like, you know, just, you know, just loosen up whatever. Because I was just thinking about everything that had happened. I was thinking about that moment when I was at Target. I was thinking about, um, you know, performing when I was younger and at Amazing Grace Conservatory and like all this shit. And I was thinking about how all this culminated into me finally being on this show, playing a character on HBO. And it was just like, fuck. And I was just kind of lost in that moment. And then she kind of snapped me back to reality. And then we got it. And she was like, let's do something else. And then we did another take and shit. And so it was just like, it was just, you know, it was hard in the moment because I was thinking about how grateful I was about everything. But then it's like, all right, nigga, snap out of it. Yeah. Show must Time to get on. to work. Yeah. Real talk. We get to use it, though. I mean, I don't know if comedians, I don't know, like, we, like, because I've had, like, very close family members die right before, like, and, and my mom, I don't know why my mama called and told me, but, like, my grandmama, my other grandma, like, right before I had to film something. And one of the beautiful things about acting is, is the show must go on because you can't say you can't do your job when it's a 10, 20, $100 million production. They're like, really? You want to do this? You do this no job. flex, Clayton? Still? No flex? Okay. No flex. Oh. <laughs> no flex. Straight no out of No flex on? No flex. No flex. No flex. No. I've acted in plenty of $25,000 productions. 
<laughs> I'm, uh, a flat tire right before you shoot an Instagram. Video. It was like, hey, man, I was supposed to go to Instagram live, and I had a flat tire. Nigga. I don't know if it works with comedy. I don't know if it works with like performing on stage. Mm-hmm. But we can use it. Mm. And and you know, my grandma died, and my dad mm. was a was a. It's funny because now he gets emotional, but his my whole life I've never seen my dad cry but one time, and that's when mm. I broke his heart because I, you know, got into another fight in school and got suspended again. Like, mm. uh, I was a knucklehead, but like he taught me, you know, I'm crying. So, so oh yeah, grandma, I'm done. Okay, you know what I'm saying? So, so suck it up. You gotta do what you gotta do. Great. Um, and I couldn't handle it. It's in the scene. If you, if you watch the show, you'll see my partner dies in my arms, and that's me actually thinking about my grandma Brown, my Please, grandma yeah. Emmeline. So you you can use it. I don't know that. That's, so there's a difference. That's a skill into it unto itself. Now you can't because you just can't just be like ah. I mean, you still like oh, I got to shoot and then run and then that. But I gotta let this thing flow through me. So as an actor, you can use that. You can like trust me. You can you could use like that that feeling of like, wow, I'm here, and then put it into your character, and somehow it just creates this more layered character. I don't know. I don't yeah. know if that works. I don't. I mean, for for performing as a as a comedian on stage. I mean, because you got to. You, 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 oh yeah, it works. It works. Well, 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 yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're taught to use everything. <laughs> everything. Yeah. Um, Neil, what what was your grandmother's name? Emma Jean. That's my mother's name. How about that? Oh, really? Em- Emma Jean McCombs is my mother's name. I always say it in all my videos. That's literally my mother's name. And my <laughs> grandmother, Emma my grandmother's Brown. name was Emma Jean as well. My my mom was a junior. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Is that okay to laugh? Can I laugh at that? <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Emma Jean Jr. Nigga. <laughs> now, now I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. I'm laughing at Ron ass for asking. Emma Jean Jr. <laughs> That's my mom's name, Imogene McCombs. Both of them. Imogene the third is what she is. <laughs> <laughs> Your mama was born with a bank account and some butterscotch in her head. <laughs> she was born with a checkbook and an attitude and a chip on her shoulders. <laughs> Your mama was born and she said, I'm too tired. <laughs> Baby came out with a hymn though, nigga. Listen. A hymn no? This this has undoubtedly been one of my uh, favorite has to be shows. Undoubtedly. Um, if for no other reason than black men being vulnerable, uh, expressing the 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 heartfelt moments of failure of rejection, and also expressing the wins and the successes of our life. Uh, Ron is very vocal about his wife and where he is with his. The same with with uh, Richie Loco. The same with Clayton. Um, and the same with, with Neil as well. Uh, Ryan is very expressive about his children and, and where he is in life. And Tristan is very expressive about his dog. So I want to <laughs> say that uh, <laughs> based on that alone, man, even if we don't do the panel, man, I, 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 if you guys are consenting, I would love to, for everyone to, um, be, I, well, I would like to send everybody each other's numbers if everyone consents to it, uh, just so we can keep this going, man, because we need, outside of like the platform to do it, we need a place for us to be men and be able to express everything that we go through. Because as black men in society, we're always expected to be strong. We always expected to be tough. Uh, and these are the restrictions and guidelines that society uh, sets up on us. But we need time to talk about the imagines. We need time to talk about um, you know, the, the, the being in the moment and realizing that everything that's happened at this point was manifested before me. I'm just now getting to that point. As Tristan said, we need time to express how thankful we are for our wives as Clayton and Ronji and myself have said, we need time to appreciate our kids the way that, that Ron Davis and Richie Loco does. So if you guys are consenting to something, I, want, I would love to like just put an email together, put everybody's contact in there. Just so we do, you know, keep in contact with each other, check up on each other, because you guys are an amazing group of black men. I think it can be uh, very essential for us to be able to lift each other up, check in on each other, and and keep each other encouraged with that. Um, with that being said, I want to thank everybody that has watched thus far. 
And at this point, I wanted to create a little space for everybody to tell people what they got going on, what people can look out for them. And if you want to thank people for their donations, you can do that now. If you guys still want to make donations, you still have time right now. Everybody's name is on there. Please donate to them. Um, this was an amazing show. So let's go. Richie, Ron, Clayton, Neil, Tristan, Ryan. Okay. Um, yeah, man. Once again, I'm Richie Loco. Um, I honestly, I'm going out every Saturday in front of L.A. Memorial Park, right in front of uh, L.A. High every Saturday at 2. Uh, we go out in March, man. I just want to keep reminding people that this is a a, a, a movement, not a moment. So um, I want to encourage all of y'all, man, to keep fighting a good fight. And um, don't give up. And we got a long way, a long, long way to go, but we just got to keep going. That's all I want to say. Mm. Which, what's your uh, your socials? And uh, did, did anybody donate that you want to thank? You don't have to say that, Matt, but you can say I don't that. even know. I've been seeing my text coming up, man. I didn't jump on my computer. I I jumped on my phone because so I was just walking in the house and you text me. But um, if you did donate, I think I got some cash app. I appreciate you so much. Um, my social is uh, Richie Loco on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. I look, can I look, Richie, man. Look, you know, I, I'm your friend in real life. I enjoy you. I'm a fan. I know you hate this because I get, I hate getting this sometimes, mm -hmm. but can you please just do it one time for your boy? What? You know what I need you to do, man. What's that? I'll tell you this. Favorite crib high C? <laughs> Thank you, man. You I'm glad I didn't have to make an offer because I was like, I'm about to <laughs> offer. If you do it, I'll do it. But I'm like, glad you didn't have to do it. So appreciate you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Cash. Yes, Cash. Ryan, uh, Ryan G, what you got for him? Hey, so uh, first of all, uh, it was a pleasure to uh, actually formally meet uh, Neil and uh, Tristan, man. Uh, absolute pleasure. Richie, we see each other fairly often, but I always appreciate you and how you handle your yes, family and your good people, man. Uh, and uh, our class of comedians is amazing. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed and I'm happy about our trajectory and we just get it started, fellas. Um, so every Thursday I do uh, a couples game show called Couples Couch with my lady on Instagram Live. F please follow me, Comedian Ron G, Comedian R-O-N-G. Also, every Sunday I do Virtual Chocolate Sundays, which is the dopest, longest running, most diverse comedy show in the nation. Uh, we do it every Sunday via Zoom. I post all the details. Uh, dope, great comedy show, great energy, good vibe. You're gonna love it. Uh, I post really incredible videos on Instagram. Uh, please follow me, Comedian Ron G on that. And also follow me on YouTube, man. I appreciate y'all so much. Also, big shout out to Ernestine. I don't know how old you are, but that is a grown name. That that name, you clearly drive a Buick with a name like Ernestine. Uh, She's a junior. She just turned 22. She is. <laughs> Ernestine. <laughs> I'm like E.T. for short. Um, also, uh, Sierra, uh, thank you so much. We appreciate you. And uh, Deanna, uh, bless you, sugar. Thank you so much. So appreciate y'all. Uh, I got family coming over, too, so I got to head out. But I appreciate y'all to hear. Thanks for thinking Did about me, bro. Out? Yes, Salute, man. Yes, uh, G. Clayton Thomas. Oh, you uh thought I was headlining this bitch. All right. Uh, first of all, let me shout oh, out. No, to... he he said me. Thank you. Oh, he, he said he. Yeah, he did. He said Ryan last. Okay, I just wanted to put that out there. All right, go ahead. Cool. Yeah. All right, I'm. I'm just real you. quick. I'm. I'm. Wait. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off too. I got. I got to run too. Oh, you got to go. Go. So go. Okay. I'm. I'm so sorry. Hey, Clay. You, hey, bro. You know. You know. So <laughs> oh, you, bro, right. you know. It's not beloved. It's not beloved. But my wife made food like 40 minutes ago. Um, but uh, Neil, man, I finally got to meet you, brother. It was uh, you too, great bro. talking to you too, man. Tristan, uh, Ryan, uh, to here for sure, man. Much love to you, brothers, man. I appreciate y'all for real, for real. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, He's the best, man. Such a good guy. Uh, well, first, I want to say thank you to Chelsea. Thank you to the, uh, Diana. Thank you to Nicholas. Thank you for Kiera. I am so grateful for you guys uh, donating some of your hard-earned money to Team CT. I am truly grateful always to be a part of this, to hear. Um, to hear inspired me so much, I decided to get my friends together, which are mainly women and a couple of the homies, and we talk about dating and relationships. So I'll do that every Wednesday and Friday on my Facebook page and YouTube at the same time. Uh, support your boy that way. I, I'll post what times. It's usually like four o'clock. But Neil and Tristan, man, it has been such an honor to listen to you guys and to talk to you today because, man, you guys are a wealth of information. And y'all super cool, man. I followed y'all both on IG. Man, I am forcing this friendship after y'all. <laughs> Uh, Neil, what you got for him? Oh, man, you know, uh, uh, 
So tonight, the reason why I was late is we have this thing that we did, uh, that Arvin Ethan David, uh, Arvin Ethan David uh, did, um, who uh, produced that show Dirk Gently that I did. Uh, it's a night of um, uh, creative protest uh, in theater. He just wrote a bunch of a bunch of these different writers, uh, writers, people of color, uh, directors, people of color, um, and actors of color got together and did a, an anthology of like um, some monologues, some dialogues, uh, and it premiered tonight. It did really well. It's called Hashtag While We Breathe. Um, that that's what I did. I had to actually film that right here in the same spot, um, playing this character. It was it was a, a great experience to do it, you know, especially in this time. Basically, doing theater from home. Um, uh, I have um, a movie coming out uh, called Last Night in Razi, um, my first lead. You know, you see it. Pay attention to to me <laughs> for more than five minutes. Um, and uh, you know, my show is uh, the show Seal Team. CBS is, is still going Wednesday nights at nine, and um, you know, Insecure and um, indeed at, uh, uh, at Neil Brown Jr. at uh, uh, Twitter and um, Instagram. And I really appreciate you having me on it, man. That was a good time seeing all you fools, uh, making me laugh, making me feel good. Keep the friendship going. Um, I appreciate y'all. Y'all hit me up anytime. Awesome, brother. I appreciate it. Tristan, what you got for him, man? Uh, let's see. Um, first of all, thank you to hear. I appreciate it. I had such a good time tonight. I had such a good time during uh, wording is hard. I can't wait to see the foolishness because uh, I can't remember what the what the hell happened during then. But um, as far as like things that are going on, um, as far as causes to to kind of uh, look at, I would say um, please follow my friends at We Are Happy Period. They're, we Are Happy Period on Instagram. Uh, bridging the access to menstrual health and safe products and reshaping the discussion on periods. It's it's not taboo, fellas. You got girlfriends, you have you have moms, you have sisters. Like it's not a bad thing or a scary thing to go down the, the menstrual cycle aisle. Like it is okay. Every woman does it for the most part. It is all right. Y'all can do it. Um, also, please, if you like uh, me, <laughs> please, please watch uh, Insecure and please, please, please check out my show Bigger on BT Plus. Uh, you get a free subscription for seven days. We can check out the whole season, 10 episodes. And um, we got a season two coming. So uh, just stay tuned. We also have another friend on that show, uh, Chase Anthony yeah. on that show as well. That's uh, another comedian, another one of our comrades, another one of our brothers in arms. So man, uh, absolutely check that show out, man. Sinbad. Yeah, he, he, he's been yeah. on the road with Sinbad for like the last three years, man. So please check that out. It's an amazing show, amazing talent on it. And uh, yeah, you would not be disappointed. Ryan Davis, if you would, please. Oh, man. Uh, i like to say thank you to Tamika, C. Shiloh, Miss Canada, Diana, Amanda, uh, Kristen, Carlin, uh, and Travia, Misha. I'm sorry it's so long. Uh, just people. Hey, um, <laughs> that was for me. That was for that. Those are the ones they sent you for me. No, <laughs> yeah, like hey, that. Whichever way, however it got here, <laughs> I appreciate you all the same. Um, I tell, uh, I like to thank to hear for having me on without me having to say anything. It was very appreciated. <laughs> um, it was appreciated. It was, I am so glad to finally have met Tristan. I met everybody else on here. I did not run it. Were you at the rap party? Yeah, I just, we just didn't end up speaking to each other. I, that's me. I'm real weird publicly, like for real. Me too. Yeah. So that, that is why you're like, yeah, like people be like, man, I can't wait to meet Ryan Davis. I know he's going to be so fun. No. <laughs> No, weird. I'm afraid. <laughs> the way y'all see me interact with these niggas, I like these niggas. I know these niggas. I'm not this person right off the bat. But uh, make sure you check out Clayton. Clayton sitting here making requests. So Clayton, I need you to do. I know y'all fucking. I need you to do it for me. What? No, you are asking for requests? We taking requests? <laughs> That's oh. why I was glad he didn't ask me to say anything because I knew he was gonna ask that. I knew it was coming. I was like, yeah, here we go. You know what's funny? I have never done this by request, and I'm going to do it right now because you asked me, and this happens to be to hear more show. Uh, 
Come on, man. I know y'all fucking. <laughs> I am so ah, disappointed in myself. My, some of my favorite <laughs> shit, man. That nigga hate doing that shit. That's another reason. <laughs> I, I had to ask this nigga to do it. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Oh man, um, oh, you know, uh, y'all check out Bigger. I, I uh, subscribe to uh, BET Plus. I watch everything. It's worth it's worth to watch, you guys. Make sure y'all go check that out. Uh, I'm not really much for self promoting right now. You know, everybody else got their thing going on. Support my friends. That's cool. If you want to support me, um, you know, just look at with all due offense on. Uh, on YouTube and on my Instagram is Ryan Davis Comedy. Uh, you can go to Hulu right now or HBO Go and you can see me on All Death Comedy. You can see me on um, Curb Your Enthusiasm. You can see me on Insecure. You know, I'm all over HBO now that I think about it. I'm doing all right. It's been a decent year. Um, if you want to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to support me, but it ain't about me. Support my friends. They're great people. Um, oh, check out my episode on wording is hard on Tahir's page. You know what I mean? I don't get the money for that. It all goes to Tahir. So make sure y'all watch <laughs> that because it's an excellent episode and I was glad to do it for free. So whenever... Uh... <laughs> Everybody does it for free, Ryan. I'm not as successful as any. I'm Yo, the least, nigga, I'm the least successful. To, I have to be this guy. Otherwise, I'm the least I'm successful of me. everybody on the on the Zoom right now. Right now, I'm the least successful of everybody on the Zoom. That so is a lie. A I that don't is give a, a shit. lie. It's not. It's you not. are a superstar. The world loves you. You're killing it. Look at all Hold the on, people wait, in wait, here. Wait, yeah. Hey, wait a right? second. Wait a second. I'm reading you're the comments. Head, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Clayton, you're headlining, right? Headlining what? Not the Zoom. No. <laughs> <What are you laughs> I want to I wanna thank uh, Tamika, Tawana, Jacory, Shayna, C. C. Shillo, uh, Nicholas Hall, Deanna. Mm. I'm sorry, uh, Diana, mm. uh, Shrud, Amanda, <laughs> Nail by Ryan, um, Christopher Wright, Janine, Jamo, Vanessa, Victoria, Talia, Shalita, Rashana, Christian. Uh, Jeremy LeBaron, uh, thank you guys <laughs> so 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 very much. Um, I cannot I cannot thank you enough. Yeah, big buddy. thank you to Christopher Wright because he came through and blessed me some some ridiculous. Um, and I also want to thank all my guests that we had here tonight, man. Ryan Davis, Tristan, uh, Neil, uh, CT, Richie Loco, oh, Reggie. That's what they meant. How you pronounce Tristan? Yeah, he been. It's kicking Got his it. ass, bro. <laughs> <laughs> giving a shin to the end of it. This it's nigga should say no. It's not. It's not shin. It's not. It's not. It's, not like it's, it's ten. It's Chris. It's Tristan. How about this? How about this? All y'all kiss my ass, okay? My mama named Imogene. <laughs> he going sh my mama in the middle of it. Trish. Damn, I was like, damn, damn, that word beating your ass. That name is <laughs> your ass. Yeah. It's like you nicknaming him and talking about his kneecap. Trish Shin is like, yeah, Trish Shin is crazy. It's strong. Um, <laughs> we got we got another amazing episode of Zooming with the Homies tomorrow night. Uh, please make sure you check out today's episode of Wording is Hard with uh, Sabrina Sith. Um, and tomorrow night on Zooming with the Homies, we have Tim Delaghetto, we have Kev on stage, we have Kanisha Buss, we have Big Ja, and we have uh, Takar Williams. It's going to be an amazing show. Uh, and then on Friday, we have another episode of Best Silent Listening Party. It's been amazing. We've actually had a lot of artists actually pull up to the listening party. We had Odyssey, we have Katori Walker, we had Lupe Fiasco this past Friday pull up in the chat. Um, so it's a lot of fun, man. Just pull up. There's a lot of things going on. Um, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for pulling up. Thank you to all my guests. And we will, guys, we'll see you tomorrow on another episode of Zooming with the Homies. Zooming with the I homies. homies. Oh my I God. just worked with him. He's in Last Night in Rosie. That's what I'm trying to tell you, dog. He's, uh, he's in that movie. Oh yeah, and, and somebody said Ryan's all over HBO with his two lines. And my response to that is, Jesus nigga, how many you got on HBO? Fuck you, nigga, I got paid. All right, <laughs> I'm on that motherfucker. It's a cold game out here, baby. <laughs> my name, my name in the credits, nigga. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. All right, y'all, y'all be easy. All right, brother. All right, all right man. Thank you.